Anehu. Anehu. And Anehu. Thank we you. got the world famous Matt Larson, aka Matus, in the left corner. Wow. <laughs> we'll edit What's out, G? A round of applause. <laughs> God, this sounds so nice. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. Like I smooth it's butter. <laughs> it is. It cheers. Is. Yeah, up? cheers. Thanks What's for up coming up. The top part of this. It's it's just decor. Oh. Yeah. Cheers, oh. son. Matt's and we could wait for you, I guess. Well. You yeah. didn't pour it when we all poured it. This is a little gift I brought the guys here. Thank you very much. Favorite sipping tequila. I can't wait. Looks really nice. Mm. Cheers. 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 Good to see you guys. Cheers, good, good to have you, Matus. Case. Hey, uh, I wish I could reach you. <laughs> mm. Whoa. That oh, is tasty. That's good stuff. What Whoa. That is wow. caramely. That's dangerous. Yes. That's what that is. This is next level. That's <laughs> next level shit. That's why you don't chew. Ooh, wow. This is like this is, That's why you don't chew? <laughs> no, that's why, you don't, that's why you don't shoot it. You, you, oh. It's sipping, sipping tequila. Uh, and most like, people associate tequila with shots. Yeah. Yeah, they do, don't they? This is this is wow. equivalent to a good whiskey. Tastes Damn. like, uh, what's that stuff that they float on the top of like Cadillac margaritas? Grand Marnier. Contro. Mm. What? Contro? Nah. No, I don't know. Ah. You guys He's are the bartender. Right? <laughs> huh? I just drink. All those were right. You guys both said oh, correct thank answers. You. Yeah. Cool. That's great. Yeah. Thank you, Case. I appreciate that. I and bartended a wedding once. Yeah, he was a beer tender, technically, so don't You'd trust him. Bartender, right? Yeah, I, I have to tell you, all of you guys have great energy. Oh, oh you do. Thank you. Good. Not Who's got to the best? You have good auras. Who's got the best? Good smiles. No, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Collectively, <laughs> it's like Megatron. Oh wow! <laughs> Who's the head of the Megatron? Oh my god! <laughs> I'm kidding. Dude. Or is that the Power Rangers? It's kidding. <laughs> they, um, were they I assemble? think it's Power Rangers. Power yeah, Ranger, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great no, show. I was thinking about that Transformers. They all get together and they. Yeah, yeah, they do that as well. That's Megatron. You're the left arm. Yeah. But what's it called in Power Rangers <laughs> when they do that? Because that's pretty sick too. I don't do that. I love that as a kid. Zordon. Do they do that when they all? Get oh together? yeah, yeah. Because oh. they all have different animals and stuff. I think. And oh, you're right. Together. They got the rings. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a little, it's a little dorkier, but you know. All right. You're the left arm. Right. I'm the left arm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, left arms are you're very the, valuable. You're the teenagers. penis, Manson. <laughs> oh, oh, there it is. That's not uh, far off. You're probably right. He's calling you a dick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, I need to start this. No, no. <laughs> we gotta shake I love it off. It. We gotta shake is it off. Is that energy oh. still good? <laughs> yeah. It's very good. Get us started. It's so fun to see you guys in this atmosphere too, because I I know yeah. both of you personally. Yeah. In case starting to get to know you, but I feel like we've yeah. known each other for a long time. Yeah, yeah. you guys look like We're you're from the same part yeah, of the world. We could be. Are you Norwegian? I am. Yeah, he's yeah. as Viking Lar- as Larson. it gets. Yeah, Larson. 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 Lar- Larson. <laughs> My dad's name is uh, Chell, K J E L L. Yeah, he's oh, cool. legit too. Yeah. Yeah. And he has an uncle Leif. It's pretty sick. And an uncle Eric. Yeah. And an uncle Arna. And an uncle Anders. Anders and an uncle Anderson. Anderson. Get them all in there. Anders, one Anderson. Of those are all my uncles. You. Yeah, I'm 99.9 percent Northern European. Wow. Which wow. is a mixture of Norwegian, Irish, wow. Brit- you know, you name it. So do you think you'll be the one breaking the chain of the Norwegian blood? <laughs> Who's doing it? Someone's <laughs> going to do it. <laughs> Everyone stay true to it. I have a, what do you mean you by get, that? Uh, 99%. It's stayed up there forever. Yeah, but I mean, are you saying like if he has a baby? If he has someone? a baby with someone who's well, not. Well, my fiance is Mexican. Oh, and so if there you looked is. at her global chart, it, she's Native All American. Over. Oh, Mexican. sick. Yeah. So you're breaking that's the chain. What you want. Yeah. No, I think that's exciting. It, it is exciting. Global, global citizen. That's oh, important. Yeah. 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 But get that dual citizenship. We'll be doing that. So yeah. that's cool. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's special. <laughs> yeah. Well, All right. So let's um, explain who you are. Uh, mm. My name is Matt Larson, mm-hmm. and I am the chief design officer and co founder of Matus. That's in San Diego, California, mm. who makes a uh, premium the Ichiban game, wetsuits. And oh, we've been yeah. doing it since 2006. And then uh, I've also been working at Mitch's Surf Shop for the last 23 years, mm-hmm. where you know me Sick. from. Yep. And prior to that, I worked at Canvas by Caton oh. at 16. Wow. So I've been Damn. working in the surf retail for 31 years. Wow. How does that feel? It's pretty amazing. That's sick. Yeah, yeah. I, I've been able. I've been fortunate enough to work at two of the most iconic surf shops. Th- there are more. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah. But working heavy with Sato Hughes at Caton and mm-hmm. then Mitch uh, Hagio at Mitch's. Yeah. You couldn't have or ask for better mentors. Totally. That's insane. Yeah. Is that where you learned how to sew and everything then? Just didn't they make yep. all their own board shirts there? I did. That's I. One of the first things I did for Sato was roll out all the fabric. Once she trusted me enough. And then you pin it wow. and, you know, line up the pattern and she would cut it out. Okay. And then how old was she back then? That's a great question. Like in her she, 80s I, or something. Right? No, no. She's probably in her 60s. <laughs> okay, I'm sure, sorry. you know, and then 
she's probably in her late 80s now, no. but she's wow. still making shorts to wow. this day, just not as often. And she trusts me enough where she, when she wasn't working, if a customer came in, I would sew on patches for people. Wow. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Um, first of all, I told my dad that we were doing this today and he loves you. So he says hi. Oh, yeah. And second of all, he was sponsored by Caton when he was a like Grom and ended up working at Caton sewing as well. So he did that stuff back in the day and yeah. knows her pretty well. Small too. world. Yeah. It is that. a small world. Yeah. It's crazy. But he told me that she was. Um, Elderly back then, so I just assumed that she. <laughs> is Some people just kind of look like that, like yeah. the guy from Law and Order, you know. Yeah, uh, that, you know what I'm talking about. With all due respect, I, I, she's probably a young soul. And yeah, I would it. always, every now and then, I bring her flowers, uh -huh. and she would just love that. And wow, that's very sweet. Unsolicited, she would come in, and sometimes, maybe once a month, every few months, make curry for everybody Whoa. that worked there. And it's to this day best curry, the best curry I've ever had. She's still wow. whipping that up. Yes. Wow. Well, I, you I don't know, it? but yeah, I, you know, I, I go in and try and oh see her every now and then. Chef yeah. Curry. Wow. Yeah. Chef Curry. Mm -hmm. Chef Curry. You writing that down? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thursdays. <laughs> so is, is Matus your nickname? Is that where that started? It is. Okay. It is. It's my nickname. Um, and it, it started from actually my Uncle Charles. So my Uncle Charles is his PhD in linguistics. Uh, is a professor. He was a professor at University of Washington. And he was the one who started calling me Matus at a young age. Mm. And it just stuck. And what so, did, how did he figure that out? I don't uh, you know. Isn't it he, he from something like Taoist well, or like the well the way Greek? well that's the logo, but okay. um my name, the way it's spelled, is old Portuguese. Really old Portuguese. Uh, they don't even spell it like that anymore. It has a different spelling with an E or U M A T E U S E. Uh, but that's where it started. And then somewhere along the lines, my friends took off the Ma and my closest friends just call me Toos mm. for short. And that's yeah. I go by that or Matt. I use Matt all the time. Um when we started Matus, the brand was more around who I was. Yeah. And early on, probably within a year, I realized that probably wasn't the story we wanted to tell. So our first tops, if you had them, our first wetsuits had monograms of my name, MLL, on there. Mm. Okay. And then our actual tags said, Nato, 1975, the year I was born, Estabilito, 2006. Wow. So there's undercurrent of, of communicating the brand was about me. Yeah. But ultimately, I think unless you're a high fashion designer, yeah. you don't want your brand to be limited to yeah. a person. Yeah, okay. and that we 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 interesting. We weaved away from that. Was yeah. that a hard as coming from yourself and it it being about you? Was that hard to pivot away from yourself? It no, sounds like I, a hard ego I, thing. I was the biggest I, I was the biggest pusher of that storyline. Oh, okay. I, I thought it was stronger, and um and that and that's what we did. And so people who know, they're like, oh, cool, like that that is Matus, but. Matus was never about me. There was yeah. other people on the team and, um, you know, it was the founders who got together and created this little Sick. baby of Matus. It's awesome. I'm a, I'm a little confused how you work at Mitch's and also created Matus, like the wetsuit brand that lots of people know and love. I, I don't get how you balance that. <clears throat> it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm there not going to lie. It. I work a lot, um, but much like yourselves, I'm sure you guys work all the time yeah. when, you, when you're doing this yeah. it has to be your passion prior to Matu starting I actually worked as a design consultant and I was fortunate enough to sit in on round tables with bigger brands and I pitched the concept of Matus to many of the big brands and they passed on it interesting yep and um, once uh, I met my business partner we aligned and we sat down and we literally did not do anything for the six, the first six months, but develop who Matus was as a person. Damn. And created a brand pyramid and Damn. the ethos, the strategy before we even launched a product. We really wanted to know who Matus would be if it was a person walking down the halls. Dang. That's awesome. Can you yeah. dive more into that? Like, yeah. what did he look sure like? That, yeah, that's, more, that's pretty he? interesting. <laughs> was he us? <laughs> kind of looked like you. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Hammer. <laughs> no, I, th I think it's important. I also think that your brand should be a mirror of who you are. Mm -hmm. And that's how you capture the authenticity that people know that's in a brand. Mm -hmm. that, and um, when you have two people coming together and synergizing that, it does become a baby. You you yeah. you are two putting, men can make a baby. Totally, I mean that that's what that's yeah. what it is. It's truly it's coming together and realizing that you have certain ideals and expectations and what you, what you think this person should be like and they're sophisticated and they're a global citizen and um, they're aware 
uh, the, all those little things that you want to yeah. go into, all the intrinsic and intrinsic things that a brand will end up being. Mm-hmm. We we did a lot of research before we even started. That's it. A, that's the way to do it. We we did that at a less sophisticated way. Mm. How did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, there's drinking three, beers. No, drinking beers. We did, we did uh, it. We did it similarly, though. Like, yeah, there's I mean, a lot of talking about what it would look like. Yeah, we I just think didn't I necessarily create a pyramid. We didn't really have like the formal training. Not that you did either, but just like the formal idea of like how to create a brand. We just sent it and like we had the envision behind it, but we didn't really. Like, uh, I wouldn't say we sat down and we're like who's gonna buy our product we just kind of thought yeah. people would buy it we honestly were worried that there wasn't because we're trying to connect two different types of people we're like i don't think anyone's gonna like it because we were going after not like one type of individual it was like two different type of people so we're like how do we get after both of them Bridge simultaneously the yeah it was and um, bridging the gap yeah well i have to i have to say yeah. that i do remember so if people don't know i worked yeah. with elliot you mm-hmm. hired me um, yeah at Mitch's. Yeah, thank you for that. Appreciate it. So I, was, that. I, I was there when you were conceptually on, just because I had exposure to you, but you were talking with these guys. I got to hear what yeah. you were doing. Mm-hmm. And I I already, I, I saw the lane that you're going for, yeah. which I thought was really interesting. Your yeah. take on Western grit and surfing and what yeah. does that look like? Mm-hmm. Uh, so fast forward, yeah. what, seven years? Yeah, whatever. it's been a minute. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's crazy. You guys have come a long way. <laughs> we yeah. have. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Really was there a time, like, because you're a buyer at Mitch's. Right? I am. Yeah. yeah. Was there a time when you realized, like, oh, they're actually doing it? Or has that not happened yet? Or was it early on? <laughs> no. Are we selling well? <laughs> like, they're actually making what they said. No, you they guys have a great about. following. I yeah. think that's the one thing that is your power is you have great content, which drives you know, people wanting to purchase your stuff, not to mention you have great graphics and all this other fun yeah. stuff. The thing is, is like your, your brand is still growing. Yeah. Cut and sew is a whole nother, you know, yeah, it's another art beast. form. It's yeah. a, it is, but you've chosen your lane, you've stuck to it yeah. and it sells really, really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. I remember one of the first things you said as a mentor to me was just stick with graphics and stick with like branding on your tees and hats and don't do anything else for a while. Yeah. Don't be too risky. Really. We pretty much did that for a long time, you know, like until we could, we had the bandwidth to start making cut and sew, but you were like, just stay there. Cause it's, that's like, you don't want to, you know, get the horse before the carriage or whatever that saying is. Yeah. Yep. Um, I mean, we waited. We have a designer now that. from from Volcom, which I feel like we've talked about a yeah. lot on the show now. But I know, I know who he is. You know JJ? Yeah, yeah he, he's Everyone phenomenal. knows him. Yeah, God, he is the, the most lovable man in the world. He might not know me, but I know him. He probably does. <laughs> he's so sick. You would honestly, you and him would hit it off. But yeah, he is great for us. But we waited. I mean, like Matt's insane. We definitely took that advice and um, tried it. What was did you say? The horse before the carriage. <laughs> What was it? Carriage, carriage before, before the horse. horse. Yeah, oh, we I, didn't messed up. I think I messed that up. Yeah, you can't you can't go reverse on the carriage. <laughs> I will say the <laughs> reverse <laughs> court. That proverb worked either yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> we we had to learn each part from the ground up because mm. we yeah we worked at retail but we didn't know where to order yeah. a t-shirt from, how to make that, where to get it printed. Yeah, every single stage we had to learn from the ground up. Mm-hmm. Totally. So a lot of people helped. Like we would meet Mike Leshers of the world and. Yeah now jj but it took a while to actually like build that foundation totally yeah i would say that seager would be like the best business uh school that you could get into because yeah. for us yeah. at least like we were just doing it trial and error and Straight your grades up. were were real sales you know like real yeah so i know good was, metaphor, actually yeah, yeah yeah so i mean starting a business as you probably know was was really eye-opening like yeah because we did we went to college and we did a business minor and i remember just sitting in the classroom looking at the whiteboard and being like what the hell is a P- profit and loss statement like how does that apply to this <laughs> at all like what is what is this yeah. numbers and then when you have to like actually do it you're like this i need yeah. to do this profit and loss statement means this because of that reason i know mm-hmm. yeah school is just not it's super important but it's there's no like there's don't no go to school, immediate. kids. <laughs> don't go to school. Get bad grades. It's a great party. time to network. <laughs> it's a great yeah, time to cigarettes, network. please. Um, it's a, yeah, it, yeah. The networking thing, yeah. the social skills and learning and stuff, and work <laughs> ethic and whatnot. But like what Matson's saying, I feel like you have to put it all on the line. Like you have to risk it to have the. I don't like want to say the biscuit. Bad. I for the it. biscuit? You can say it. We I want to like say biscuit. that. You had that pause, and I was like, to risk it right there. My grandma used to say biscuit. She's English. She used to say, "You want a biscuit." And I was like, Grandma, it's not a cookie. 
It's a biscuit. You know, you can't confuse that shit. We go on yeah. a lot of tangents, by the yeah, way. Yeah, we do. That's okay. <laughs> I, we I, do. I've, I've watched all of them. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. Which, I enjoy them. I'm yeah. one of the. I'm one of the. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. Which, yeah. real quick, can I yeah. get a little bit more? Oh, wow. I, wow. Wow. I, get I love drunk it. I love it. I love it. Good thing there's no joints in here. That's it would get um, way worse. T- touching though on your on the success of your t-shirts, though, I think the one thing that's really fascinating for me as a buyer at Mitch's, uh, aside from all the great people that I work with there, is seeing certain brands take off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's through great. Mitch's, I can tell you definitively, yeah. Salty Crew started out there, which you guys know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys were I think probably Dekine too, right? Uh, or am I making that up? No, there's, there's been a lot. That, like right Ruka. I mean, yeah. to see Ruka, like yourself, started with just doing T-shirts, and they were putting them in packages so no one could even look at them. You had to unzip them Gnarly. and so forth. You guys. Yeah. Um, but seeing the, to that type of trajectory, it's so fun to watch. That's yeah. awesome. Thank Especially you. when it's personal. Yeah. You know, you know them. Yeah. That and is then sick. all of the local clientele come in, like, I know these guys. And like, they're like, do you know this guy? I'm like, oh, we know them. Like, yeah. Oh, we love them. They're so That's cool. Sick. Yeah, people support you, but then there's also people who just love your artwork and what mm-hmm. you're doing. And I think like your brand is capturing people who just like and enjoy the outdoors. Yeah, yeah. which is a really big umbrella. Yeah, it's you a know? huge umbrella. Yeah. That's funny. It's we just went on a the Trans Catalina Trail, which is oh that looks I saw so that. Sick. that so cool. Yeah, cool. I loved but, it. And you know Ryan Walsh, right? Mm-hmm. So he brought a buddy who like had no had no like notion of who we were and so he shows up and he's wearing a seeger shirt and I, the whole time i'm watching or with him i'm like oh, he, you know he must have known ryan and got the shirt through him and by the end of the trip i was like that's an og shirt like where'd you get that and he's like oh i got it at mitch's and, and uh <laughs> and ryan's like you just got it at mitch's he's like yeah i didn't even i don't even know who these guys were it was just a sick graphic and i was like Oh wow, yeah. that's yeah. just like that's organic funny. as hell. That's Let's go. Know. That's awesome. That's, that's sick. So that kind of stuff, and and I kind of wanted to touch base on the fact that you really were one of the first and only people to pick up Seeger in the beginning, yeah. and and we want to thank you for yeah, that. Thank you for the faith for and the for belief. Whatever we're doing now is like such a huge thing. You know, for that. retailers Appreciate are. It. Everything. Honestly. Well, undoubtedly, we're not your biggest retailer, but Core. we curate what we do have yeah. in a great way, yeah. and we try and support where we can. Yeah. Definitely. And as it grows, it's yeah, it, it's going to be a crazy, probably next five years for you guys. Yeah. Uh, looking outside in, yeah. and I think that's exciting. But yeah. you know, the one thing I have to say, um, being in the industry for so long, yeah, there's n- there's not other bands like you in that is that a good thing well it's a good thing think about the surf industry right now is it's so homogenized yeah and everyone is owned by the large know. venture groups yeah and it's a little sad and then if you think about what surf what surf industry is and you look at like an amber Crombie and fitch is that surf they're you're they're curating surf and capturing sales off of are they the really surf called. well yeah they, they they make stuff they have a surf, surf line no ish. they that's yeah. their branding yeah are you serious yeah, i yeah. thought it was, are they the one where they take the shirts off and they stand at the door yeah yeah, yeah. Are are you serious? Absolutely. yeah. no yeah. way yeah. yeah i go that's in there all the time brand. No. Yeah. <laughs> well no, thank you wow. my, my point is is that there aren't many new brands you're in a space yeah. right now that is virtually left open me. Yeah. because everyone thinks they can't compete in there yeah. but you're doing it and not not to say that uh Matus did that with wetsuits. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, we we we're, we have a different path than you and yeah. what we're doing and where we're going. Yeah. But in that space, you are proving that a small company can get in there and do some really cool stuff. It's very true. Yeah. yeah. I, I gotta say too, because it sounds so cheesy, but it really did just take years of not getting paid and believing in it. Yeah. Like, like everyone says, like if you work hard enough, you could do what you want. We literally didn't get paid, and we're just grinding. This is just waking up, years. listening to Gary V every morning, <laughs> <laughs> like, writing on the mirror. It sounds so cheesy, <laughs> but it's like we lived in our warehouse. I know yeah. we could that say that out loud though. now because yeah. we don't live there well, anymore. Sorry, but, Jay. We yeah, we didn't. <laughs> we lived in our warehouse and grinded for two years. Yeah. We wouldn't we have it any other paid. way. Though. Yeah, That's yeah, it was sick. Yeah. People we, would come in to like a warehouse party, and they're like, "Wait, you live here?" We're like. <laughs> yeah, some some people just aren't so willing sick. to go that far. I know, and we were willing to go that far. Yeah, you gotta yeah. go illegal. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what you gotta do. Yeah, but anyways, sorry, that was well, a that was a bit of a. Oh, I got something. Yeah, to go back to the whole like, thank you for bringing us in. Oh, I yeah, remember yeah. 
the first like because you're you're friends with me and you're friends with Elliot. Obviously, he worked yeah. there. And yeah. um, well, you more than Elliot. Oh. Yeah, you and, guys have a special Andy's relationship. <laughs> I'm jealous. Honestly. What about no, I? I no. love all you guys. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I'm, bi- I'm big fans of you, and I don't just say that because I'm in front of you. I really am. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we love you too. I wanted to, <laughs> <laughs> like, I just remember, and this this is like going back to every shop we we approach, but mostly because growing up in La Jolla yeah, and huge. having Mitch's be like kind of a scary place to step into. Not really scary, but just like, what's the right word? Like intimidating. Yeah, intimidating. Yeah. You got all the older guys yeah. there, and like. Mitch is a legend, and you're there being all nice and cool to everyone, and then you just like walk, and you're like, "There's Brett running like, around." I have a catalog I need to show them, and I don't know if they're gonna like it, and it's so crappy, like this little I piece know. of paper. Like it was and, embarrassing. And then, sure. you, and then you were, you you were you. You were like up front and like very um, professional, professional about it. But I just remember feeling awkward because I knew that you kind of had to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> he knew it was a done deal walking in. Yeah, just like, <laughs> like, do you want this? You're like, uh, no. I'm in the back of my head, because I'm just thinking like, there's no way. Why would he want this stuff? It's like so <laughs> random. Like, it's just a cowboy surf company or Western surf company. Like, yeah. this is like, why would he want this? And and he's got so many other things to worry about. And then you, I mean, you continuously bought stuff. But when I would leave there, I'd be like, I can't believe he said yes. Like, I know. I crazy. remember feeling so nervous walking into there. Yeah. I don't know why. It's it is very intimidating. The way it's set up, where you have to walk in, Mitch is right there. There's like probably three people behind the counter just staring at you. You know, there's yeah. like an aquarium. You're like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? We, we, yeah. I, I, I think Mitch's does have that stigma. It is an old, back to the old days type surf shop. Yeah. It's been there for a long time. That's why people love it, though. Yeah. There's so much authenticity. Oh, Mitch yeah. has done everything. The guy has done everything. 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 When did it start again? Sixties. Well, sixty-seven. Technically, it started in nineteen sixty-four-ish, but yeah. there's wow. say sixty-seven. But think about this: Mitch was in high school, a sophomore, starting a business. I challenge you That's to find insane. another store That's that is insane. still it's going on fifty-five years. Oh my And God. he would open on the weekends, go to school, and. That's that insane. is the store. My mom is the same class as him and would go to his surf shop. Oh, that is so day. cool. Isn't that sick? It That's is. That's insane. Yeah. yeah. But Mitch was there to see every new product that came out. Wow. So he had told me that there had been times where he thought he would go out of business. And then the leash came out or the wetsuit came out. Or oh, and what? it would just it, sell like crazy. It would sell. And that would keep Damn. the doors open. But Mitch really did a very smart thing yeah. is he started supporting shapers. So Grubby yeah, Clark sick. came to him who, when he invented foam. And Mitch cornered that market with resin, fiberglass, and polyurethane foam. And to this day, people still come oh, and yeah. purchase board building supplies. Okay. Uh, I remember you that. Know, if there's tiers to being core. Yeah. He's done them all. Surfboards. Yeah. Are, you want to have surfboards in a surf shop, yeah. not just clothing. And then you're going to have maybe some repair stuff. But when you have actual polyurethane and yeah. resin and... And just staying in so the same sick. spot for the whole time. Too. And so always yeah. being there every day. Every day. It's his yeah. routine. He That's loves insane. Yeah, I think routine, I think finding routine like that in your life is, is a Discipline. key. To, well, yeah, but I also think it brings happiness to him. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he'll ever leave that store, ever. You know, that's, that's a part insane. It's a part of his DNA. How what, old is What he? about you? Me? Yeah, I know. Would you <laughs> ever leave? That's <laughs> actually gnarly to think. Yeah, I, I enjoy retail. I love meeting I love people. Too. I love talking to people. And for me, as someone who's designing product that's on the floor, first and foremost, I never push people into my tooth, ever. Yeah. It's always about good experience and fit. But that said, I get to hear what people are saying. Yeah. So you do, if, you're, if you can look into the future, you know what people want before they do. Mm-hmm. And you see that relationship. Yeah. And um, that's what I like about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Damn. And now a word from our sponsor. Sugar's been tearing up this town for far too long. Been taking out canned cocktails left and right. But it's about time all this sugar met its match. Real spirits. Real juice. No added sugar. Dodge the sugar with June Shine's new canned cocktails. Damn. Yeah, Damn. I got a, I got a bit of a random question here. <laughs> yes. But I was here. really curious because I, I bought it. I don't know if you saw it when I bought that wetsuit, but you bought mm. it. I bought it. She bought it. Um, great wetsuit, by the way. Remember, I texted you and I was like, I lost it, and I drove back, and yeah. someone hung it up. Oh, for I've me. done that. That's the Dude, worst. I was like, I just bought it, and I panicked. But 
nonetheless, great wetsuit. And I bought the JFK t-shirt. Oh, and I, I saw you wearing it in a podcast. Yes. I, was so happy. <laughs> I, I yeah. wish I saved it for today, yeah. to be honest. I apologize. But um, I wanted to ask where your love for JFK came and why. Uh, you I, made a shirt of JFK's yeah. face. Well, there, the that whole um, portion of, came with what we called the Big Faces campaign. So it was like okay. Genghis Khan and oh my uh, Abraham Lincoln, uh, Frederick Douglass, JFK. But Damn. JFK ties into the ethos of NASA, right? Because he was the one who introduced like space exploration to America. And Damn. and we've always used uh, that, you know, Yamamoto material was yeah. used on all the Apollo missions. Hence, there's wow. the tie in there. Wow. Okay. Um, I didn't know this. But he was, but I mean, arguably, like people can argue the other way. JFK yeah. was a very interesting figure. Definitely. For the yeah. good and for the bad. Yeah. He's not just, uh, he's not a perfect individual. What's the worst thing he's Nobody done? Nobody is. I yeah. feel like, I don't know that many bad things. Uh, well, Other than there's like some he, sort of mafia she, thing. She cheated right? on his, his wife. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Infidelity. But that was <laughs> the 60s. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah, just yeah, kidding. Yeah. I'm married. It's fine. <laughs> Sorry, Geneva. It was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, holy shit, he's serious. It got really quiet. <laughs> yeah. I, I ask Elliot about that shirt every time he wears it. I'm like, JFK? why JFK? Yeah. And that's cool to hear, actually. Yeah, it has a Matus logo on the That's a cool connection. Yep. Yeah, great shirt. Yeah, great shirt. Um, I was just curious because it's such a JFK shirt. I was like, he must. There must be something there. Yeah, but that makes sense with space. Space, space exploration. Yeah, I love space. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Yeah, I'd love to hear too. Just the start of Matus because I what I've heard of like Elliot's stories is that you're always jotting stuff down in your notebook. Mm-hmm. Thank you for our notebook. Yeah. Journaling, journaling, but sketching too. Yeah, sketching yeah. a lot of fantastic wetsuits. artists. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have to preface that. I'm here as a co-founder. Yeah. And Matus is the genesis in of two of two people coming together who have a really great connection. And in that connection, we created Matus. And so without one person, it just it just isn't right. You have someone like you guys that's yeah. a counterpoint. So we became a really, really powerful yin and yang. For creating the brand where one person might push the other person would pull and vice versa yeah. and in doing so you temper one another next thing you know you have this really really cool bandwidth of what you're trying to communicate and how yeah and um so i have to preface all of that with that matus was created in this beautiful place of understanding what we wanted to do mm. but for me prior to this if i'm going to back up before matus was even started and i even met so like 20 years ago uh, yep. Yeah. Um, I was working again as a design consultant. I pitched, I had actually pitched the idea of Ma- Matus to other brands. Uh, Matus being the, the idea being a high end material. When you'd walk into a surf shop at yeah. Mitch's anywhere, when I would sell you a wetsuit, it was entry level, mid range, high end suits. And the, all the amenities that would go into each said tier, yeah. no brand was focused on the foam. No one. It was all about uh, this has taping, this has hollow fiber, it's built this way, it's warmer. Yeah. There was a more sophisticated surfer that was becoming older. Yeah. And I knew that if you educated them on material, they would respond. The material being limestone. So Matus in 2006 was the first to introduce and educate about limestone material. Now, if you go into a surf shop, everybody's doing limestone. Wow. Um, and I'm proud of that. And yeah. li- limestone is a great alternative. It's not the end all. And we're still working on that. But that's where the genesis came from. The idea of creating a new category of wetsuits. Because you have to think in 2005, no one was making a wetsuit that was over $400. Yeah, yeah. The most expensive wetsuit back in the day was maybe $390. And then all of a sudden we came out and we're like, here's a $500 wetsuit. And they're like, who is this guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And that's where the education came from. And I would say that if you think about it, we're kind of like a Starbucks that educated all of the coffee consumers on what it is to have good coffee. And now you see all of these individual coffee roasters out there Mm -hmm. doing the same thing, trying to mimic it. Yep. Doing that. But our lens from day one was to create products that had great longevity with performance. Yeah. That's our lens. I mean, that makes sense. Everything we want to do is, is longevity with performance because longevity is sustainability. Yeah. And, and not to mention great branding and marketing, too. Because yeah, I, sure. I don't yeah. know if you know this, as I think you were saying earlier before the podcast, um, you kind of are so enveloped with the brand itself that you don't see how other people vision it. Right. Um, for me personally, I mean, I've known about it since 2006 pretty much. Like 
but the I've always just been like such a brand loyal like human to you because the wetsuits are great quality and your marketing is insane. Like if I if I'm wearing your wetsuit, I love how the, like the the brands are is well displayed in a place that most brand branded wetsuits don't do that, but it's like simple and clean. Yeah. And it's if I see someone loud. else wearing that same thing, yeah. I'm like that guy knows. Yeah. That guy knows what know. It does feel like, like that. Like you said the who is the Matus guy like you do when you see a guy wearing a Matus suit like yeah. it's always one of the, it's almost like when guys are on motorcycles and they're like yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Like you get that little wave, you know. Like, oh, right. and back in the day too, it was it was a San Diego thing. Like, yeah. yeah, I remember being like, if if someone's in the lineup, like I, it's almost something to talk about. Like, how did you find out about this? But now, yeah. not anymore. It's obviously a I feel like everyone in the Hoya is wearing Matias at this point. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, to an extent, but yeah. back I mean, in the day, like it was millions like, of people. Yeah. And, I, and, and honestly, I don't push. If you came in, yeah. there's so many times where I have an interaction with the customer. And they have no idea. They have no idea. Yeah. And they're surprised that I push them into another suit because there's so many good wetsuits out is, there. That is crazy. And I, am, I want people to have a good experience, and I also care about their earth. So if I get them in the right fitting wetsuit, they're going to have better experience, better longevity. Yeah. That's all I care about. Yeah, and if it's true. in a Matus, great. Yeah. Um, Let's say Matus is number one. Who's number two in wetsuits? Who's number two? Like, is there a... An outstanding uh, wetsuit. It's hard for me to use that analogy yeah. because I, I I don't think we're number one. I think we can be number one for people. Yeah. yeah. But I know that again, it's all about silhouettes and experience and fit. And some people aren't going to fit it. Now we're always trying to improve. Yeah. If the one thing you have to understand about Matus, we're not content. Our goal is to always get better, and we're ultimately curious about everything we do. And with that curiosity, you improve, you improve, you improve. Yeah. And if you're not focused on what other people are doing, you will be more innovative. Yeah. The problem with other wetsuit companies, big ones, is they're always looking at one another being like, what's selling? And yeah. so they duplicate that. I don't want anything to do with that. I wonder if they're always looking at you, like if you're kind of starting. I would trend. imagine if you're forward thinking, right, and you're yeah. not worried, that means you're going to come out with out of the box ideas and they're just like, I'm going to. Yeah. yeah, I will I'm say that's what that. that's what JM says about, I mean, not that JM. everyone's looking at Seeger. Jordan Mead. JM to yeah. him? Jordan like, Mead. I know, Jordan, 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 yeah. Right, buddy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, to J- everyone. Well, Jordan, yeah, audience. Jordan, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Jordan Mead, our sales rep. Yeah, yeah. We love you, Jordan. Um, I, I love JM, you too, Jordan. <laughs> yeah. JM always says, like, people are looking at us because we're, I guess, like the smaller core. So the bigger brands would look at us to be like, how can we That's destroy them? Happen. But not saying that everyone's looking at us, but I think a lot of people would be looking at Matus for the quality and innovation that you guys are yeah. reaching. Yeah. And there again, I, there's other great brands out there, and I fully support you buying other brands. Please, you know, yeah. fit, buy what fits fits you well. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I like the the Starbucks analogy because I don't <laughs> I don't want you to be a Starbucks. I want no, you to be no. Like a, I'm just meaning <laughs> education. Like a, how about this? Well, how about when it comes Tesla? to educating Starbucks, really educated people on what coffee was. Yeah. Like you know, coffee that was the biggest yeah. chain. Yeah, but yeah. right. I agree. Tesla yeah. was Tesla good. would be a good one Ooh, because yeah, I was I like thinking Tesla. that too. Yeah. Yeah. We were all thinking that. I, yeah, that's you great. definitely have that yeah. like yeah. Elon energy, dude. Yeah. You should do a shirt with just his face. Yeah. But in, in a good way. I that? can't wait for you Elon's to see cool. what we're doing in the future. Like Matus, yeah. the, the next That's what Elon 18 say. to 24 months. Yeah, we have some really cool stuff. I mean, I Big can't wait to coin. see what people think of it because I've worked so hard on some of the new materials yeah. and I'm so proud of them. But because of COVID, we couldn't release certain pieces because you're, we're getting capped at the manufacturing, the manufacturer level. Oh, okay. They're, they're, they're just not enough capacity to mm-hmm. build yeah. certain suits and we didn't want to go into new technology if we're getting capped at how many units we're building yeah but when you see it it's really exciting i think you it's have like gonna a drill. lab like are you like your r d like how is this yeah when you're designing yeah. something new yeah. like at what home, does that look like i have a Good little question. design studio oh really that is shared with like me and my dojo fiance. yeah my fiance actually she is a professional sewer seamstress oh really Whoa. she is super creative makes all these fun things so we collaborate on a lot of stuff but that's wow. our little area where it would be a guest room it's literally where we get oh creative and just do whatever what does it look like want. i'm just trying uh, to we have a big, right now. a big table like this in the okay. center and then anything that we need and you know racks just ready to yeah. roll does sewing machines uh she's working on it yeah that's awesome, <laughs> that's awesome. That's yeah sick. she's really talented um awesome. so it's, it's really fun to watch her start to curate her line and mm-hmm. yeah Wow. But anyways, yeah. The next the next iteration oh, yeah. of material. Yeah. Uh it's called Chamber Zero. You'll see it Oof. in unfortunately twenty 
23, mm -hmm. but okay, it's dual gravity insulation. No dual one's done it. Dual gravity yeah. insulation. You're going to have to tell me what that means. <laughs> it's, that's your it's, body. It's, it's, been, been, it's been a baby of a project of mine uh, for the last four and a half years. Okay. And you're marrying two different gravities of density of rubber together to create optimum, optimum performance. It's really, really elastic. So I can reduce it more to your body. Okay. And I get almost a custom fit without hurting the durability. And at one point I was pushing the technology the wrong way. And I learned from that. I was, yeah. I was trying to go thinner. I'm like, wow, this is so amazing. And I went too thin. I was like, you know what? This isn't what I wanted. I realized that I can go with the same thickness that you would be used to a yeah. four mil, three mil, but it doesn't feel like a four and three mil. It's way lighter and way warmer. So I didn't have to go thinner. I could just keep the physical attributes of the material. Okay. But um, it has exposed chambers to you that allow water to fill into the holes when water gets in, and they don't move around. And so you become really efficient at, at warming that Keep water warm. that's next to your body because it's not moving. And then your your uh, body's radiant heat is also not allowed to leave this this space. So you're having water and air in these chambers just keeping you warm. And a really, really light oh as well. God. About half the weight of a wetsuit that we're producing right now. Wow. So there's got to be some, like, I mean, just initial drawbacks with that too, though, right? Like, even just, I mean, if you're keeping all that body weight or body heat in, isn't yep. there other things staying in that you don't necessarily want to stay in? Or like like airflow and stuff? No. no. As long as you have the right wetsuit for the category of water, uh -huh. you're good because okay. you're sl you're going to always lose heat. It's, it's just, yeah. it's in the head. Radi or, yep. oh, Radiant yeah. heat is going to lose. Your, your body temper is way, way too, your body temperature is way too high for the ocean, but you're just trying to slow that experience down. Okay. But you're right. You have to understand on a normal bell curve where your experience lies with wetsuits, yeah. so that you're purchasing the right thickness and you're yeah. not getting overheated and yeah. or underheated. And you said that yeah. the wetsuit fits like it's almost custom, but there's obviously size scale. So are we looking at like nanotechnology here? Or well, oh my it, God. it's just that's like wraps onto your body. When, <laughs> when you have crazy. a silhouette, any silhouette, you know, when you're producing a wetsuit, let's say you reduce your silhouette two inches and you're stretching into it. Ultimately, what you want a wetsuit to be is a suit that is nice and snug everywhere. And mm -hmm. you're stretching the material about 50%. Yep. And in that, you're getting the best longevity and warmth. With this material, I can reduce it even more. And so when you get into it, it, the whole silhouette is indented off your body. But once you stretch into it, you're stretching it maybe 70, 80 percent, but you're not hurting the actual elasticity because Damn. great recovery memory and uh, durability. Cool. Yeah, that's fucking badass. Yeah. Like, so when you're it. when you're innovating like this, how do you figure this stuff out? Just Where do you find the material? Uh, well, I work with Yamamoto and luckily they have uh, total trust in me. They okay. they have built material for me just on a whim. I said, Hey, I think this would work because of X, they make it, they test it. And they're like, you're right. So, it, so it, you're it creating worked. this from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. This is, this is totally made for us. This isn't just, wow. when did your, when did your love for wetsuits? You are like, you are a fucking <laughs> wetsuit guru, dude. Like, where did this, it's, it started, it started at Caton. Actually, you just said, fuck it. I'm going into wetsuits. Those are board shorts you're talking about. Yeah. Like when did you transfer <laughs> over and when did it become like no, an there's, addiction? There was wetsuits inside of Caden, we sold everything just like any surf yeah. shop. And I had two great managers. I have to tell you, I think when you become better at the tasks you do, a lot of it has to do with management. Your good management will get you to a place where you're watching by observing. Uh, two of them is Dana, Dana Gibson and Travis Hosier, unfortunately, has passed away. They were phenomenal managers. And Travis was the one who really got me interested in wetsuits. He was the wetsuit buyer was going all over all this stuff. And I, I just loved it because I love the connection that people have with inanimate objects. And a wetsuit was this barrier that I was wearing to go out into the surf that I just started developing connections with. And mm -hmm. wow, this is so cool. This is a part of me. Yeah. But I've always had a fascination with products that last long. Like that's interesting. I mean, you yeah. walked in with a Filson bag. Yep. That, I I mean, like I've that had that for like 22 sign. years. Wow. Yeah. 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 Do you oil it and everything and do all yeah. that little? But you know, that's one of my earliest memories, I think, where I had a fondness of longevity was my dad grew up in Alaska. And so when okay. we would go hunting and fishing, yeah. I, that's what I was wearing, Helly Hansen and Filson. So you're uh, talking wax canvas. I was wearing my grandpa's jackets, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah. old. Sick. And you're like, I love it. I yeah. think when you have a connection with an animal object, you develop memories with it totally. and you're less likely to throw it away. And that's why we have the whole hashtag love Matus. Yeah. It's all about having experiences that last longer. Yeah. So people don't throw things away. Definitely. I mean, that Super sounds cool. that connection right there, that story. I feel like psychologically that makes a lot of sense why you connect so much with 
sustainability or items that last the test of time. I mean, those are brands that are built on that sort of ethos too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're just bringing that energy to wetsuits, which nobody has. <laughs> Is there anyone else that's in the wetsuit industry that's kind of taking on that sort of energy or are they just other than the big companies that are trying to, like you said, just, you know, sell more and what's trending or whatnot. But like, are there other brands that you think are pushing the limits? I think the, the, the one brand who was doing a really good job at pushing the limits yeah. back in the day, who no longer is doing wetsuits like they were, were yeah. was more my more my more am I was mm. a brand from Brazil that was just really ahead of their time. They were using yeah. smooth composite skin for anyone. They were using surgical rubber. They were doing some really cool, innovative things. That's awesome. Um, but if you think about the grandfathers of wetsuits, uh, O'Neill, obviously, Jack O'Neill. Yeah. And prior to Jack O'Neill and the Maestrals, who everyone attaches to Body Glove, it was really Bev Morgan and Hap Jacobs who were on the other end. So you had uh, Jack O'Neill, Bev Morgan, were the two people who really pioneered where people were going with surfing and dive. Wow. Yeah. yeah. When We're, you said grandfathers of wetsuits, I yeah. just had a brain blast that before wetsuits, people would just surf in freezing cold yeah. water. Yeah. Without no. anything. You know, you know, I love the beaver tail thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I love That's surf insane. history, but if you think about um, wetsuit material, neoprene was started around 1930 by a guy named Wallace Carruthers. And he invented nylon and he invented neoprene. Oh yeah. my God. Can you yeah. look him up, please? Yeah. That's is the he, first thing is we he rich up, as shit? Yeah. Yeah. Is that we for, get, is that for, like, is that for was, scuba? Uh, how, do you, how do you spell his first name? Wallace. Oh, Wallace. Wallace Grothens? Carruthers. Carruthers. Oh, wow. It's way off. Carruthers. <laughs> and Gromit. Wallace and Gromit. Uh, and then put DuPont after his name. <laughs> Are you like serious? C-U- yeah, du- DuPont is the chemical, the company he worked for. Oh, I like, was like, I he's know. in the DuPont yeah. family? And then, and then it was... Um, How would you spell Carruthers? So, I don't know. C- uh, uh, I think it's C-A-R. And Gromit, I think. O-T-H-E-R-S. American chemist. Carruthers. Carruthers. All right. Holy. Good looking guy. Do you do you consider yourself good at chemistry? Good looking guy. Stuff like that? I enjoyed chemistry. I had to work hard at it. Gotcha. Yeah. Because it has a lot to do with like fabrics and reaction to fabrics. I'm a textile nerd. Okay. I love I love textiles. Gotcha. Um, you and JJ would get along great. Yeah, yeah, you would. Yeah. He's from Philly. Oh no, he's from Iowa. Yeah. He was hired there by Dupont go. to work for Fundamental Research. Yeah, so, so he invented they're, they're, in Nylon. Yeah, wow. Let's find net worth on that bitch right now. <laughs> and then you, you, his he's, counterpart he's so old. is a guy is about. a guy named Otto Bayer, as you know, as Bayer Company, right? So yeah. the yes. Bayer, that's Paint. Otto Bayer. He was in in um, he was in Europe, uh, Germany, I believe. And uh, yeah, there he is. Oh, he's and he's the counterpart to, oh, to different payer, not paint. Yeah. Oh, it's not paint. Oh, it's That's the like big pharma. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We trust yeah. him for sure. <laughs> we trust him. Yeah. Uh, JFK. JFK, baby. <laughs> he's a Scorpio, <laughs> Elliot. Oh, is it? But, yeah. but hey, same with you, guys, dude. I have to say, in my uh, my self exploration and history of wetsuits, yeah. I would actually attribute Bev Morgan to being the first person to really develop the wetsuit no way. before Jack O'Neill, mm. before the, well, the Maestros came in later. Bev Morgan was a student at Scripps. He was from LA. Um, he was able to read a science journal that was put Is that out. the fucking guy? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> what a legend. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, full body he, one, dude. And, that one's and yeah, he left. He left. So he started dive and surf with Hap Jacobs. Uh, so you guys what? are familiar with wow. Hap yeah. Jacobs? Yeah, yeah. Hap Jacobs left Hap to start Jacobs. a surfboard company with Dale Velzi. You guys know Velzi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's okay. the hawk, dude. And so he was still at uh, dive and surf, and he sold the remaining interest of dive and surf to the Maestros, who you know as the Body Glove founders. Oh, whoa! God. But prior to them coming in, he was already building rubber because at Scripps he at he read this. Uh, what a man. There, there's a guy named Dr. Hugh Bradner. Hugh Bradner was the person who actually put together um, a build for the military to help the UDT divers, a.k.a. SEALs mm-hmm. now, yeah. prevent them from getting hurt from underwater shockwaves. So that's what the neoprene was supposed to do. But in his research, he realized and he noted that these divers were staying warm while being wet. So wow. they didn't have to keep water out. Uh. And that was huge. And and then Bev Morgan saw that he was he traced that material to Rubitex. Rubitex is a brand oh that was God. making rubber on the East Coast, and he started making wetsuits. Now, coincidentally, Jack O'Neill somehow saw that at the same time. So you had two different people With at the same no time connection. making wow. making wetsuits, and they fight over who first started the wetsuit. Oh. But they were doing it at the same time, and actually, there was people in Australia doing it as well. So it's, it's who so, do you think is first? I feel like you would know. I, he I, thinks Bev. I think it's you Bev. think Bev. I think I think Bev. Just I mean, if you look at it by like year it. and when articles came out and 
Um, Plus, the military is always like 10 years ahead. But, you know, Bev Morgan, he he actually invented a lot of the dive helmets that people are using. I mean, that guy is phenomenal. Oh, you think, yeah, yeah he, was, he was passionate more about diving than surf. Damn, that's yeah. crazy. The, what a the, legend. The uh, military stuff got me thinking. Do you have any military contracts for we, SEALs? We do. We make Whoa. the SAR suit. It's called the Search and Rescue. It's on all Whoa. the aircraft carriers. Okay. And Can we look this up? With your guys' logo that. and everything, or is that more How would we a, find that? Like a side? Well, you could look at our SAR suit on Matus, but uh, we definitely have photos of the SAR divers, and they're on the aircraft carriers. So if a... Uh, wow. Pilot goes down in the water. There it is. That's the spring suit. But yeah, that that's one. awesome. The funny thing about that story is, we it's hard to compete getting contracts in the military. You yeah. just don't build a product cheap enough f- to compete. Like we yeah. and we sent it to them. I kid you not, it came back in a box, totally hammered, ripped, and they said you guys passed. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What did and, you do to it? Uh, they still buy wetsuits from us today. Wow. But what they wanted is they wanted a really durable wetsuit yeah. that could withstand all of the friction from the harnesses. Uh, that makes yeah. sense. And keep keep someone warm as possible in the least amount of material. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then when you do Navy SEAL stuff, they you don't have to worry about being very compliant, make it here in the States. You can actually get uh, gnarly with yeah, it. Yeah, and get gnarly with it, depending on what they want. You know, every SEAL team yeah. is different. Yeah. A lot of them don't want thermal registry. They don't want to be seen when they're coming out of the water. How are you? Wow, are you meeting with crazy. them and kind of talking about these sort of details? Or like, hey, how can you can you put like missile launchers like off of the arms? Oh, yeah. Shit? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this James seems Bond like style. private info. Let's yeah. dig in more. I would love to dive into yeah. this. Uh, are you guys aware contract? that Bev Morgan is actually the co-founder of Bevmo? No, <laughs> <he's not. laughs> it's named after him. Though. I've been holding that one, and I really wanted. To he is it. the dive insert founder. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wait, but so these lady. military contracts. When you make a wetsuit, are you making them for any seals? Because I would assume that seals would pay the most. We have we have made we have made seal, wetsuits for seals, but they could come to you at any time because they're whatever they're doing. When they go downrange. Yeah, it's always different, so they don't really know what they need and almost till the last second. So it's not like you can kind of pre-build something particular for them that they know that they're going to need in six months. Yeah. It's more of immediacy. They're yeah. like falling out of the plane like, God, I wish I had missed on my arms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining like they, so come, they come to you and they're like, we need a knife strap yeah. right here. Yeah. Yeah. Strap. And you're like, all so right, sick. I'll do it. Yeah. And it takes two weeks some and you it, sew it all together. Yeah. I love those guys. They're, they're amazing. You meet some of these guys and some of them you can tell you're like, this guy's a seal. Yeah. You know, but then you meet some who you would never suspect. They just look like a normal guy you want to have a beer with. and uh, Like, not physically Like, they're just a normal, huge. like... You know, they okay. look like a normal guy, not physically uh Don't look at me like fit. that. What do you mean by that? Why are you staring at me? I'm not going to say it. But, but, uh, <laughs> but you realize mentally they're just so tough. It's more, yeah. it's all mental. You're I mean, right. Obviously, having all the other attributes of being a very strong person and yeah. whatnot help. But if you don't have it upstairs, it doesn't matter what's yeah, downstairs. Yeah, I was oh, thinking... <laughs> <laughs> well, the the guy that we met, John in Montana, he wasn't a seal, but he was. What yeah, was his title? Sears. Yeah, Sears. Like that survival. Program. It's survival and uh, sea or sea, air, and land, something like that. He was basically like a survival expert wow. in yeah. the military, I believe. It was yeah, like it's special like a, forces. It's, yeah. an, it's Air um, Force, I believe, I believe. He's the type of guy for sure where you're like, okay, I know he could do anything, and he now owns a ranch and. Does bison? That sounds fun. You guys took a course with him. Bison? No, oh, he, we were already on his ranch. Oh, he does okay. not do bison. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's what he, you said. He he, <laughs> uh, he he gathers bison and makes bison <laughs> bites. Honestly, I just didn't want to say that. Bison is chili. He's a bison he ranch. Creates he, bison yeah. bites. <laughs> yeah, he does. He slaughters them. Um, but he, yeah, he was he was a special forces. But you could just tell like he could. He could survive in any type of experience. Yeah. It's yeah. like that mental. And game. he was unassuming too. I yeah. feel like he captured what you were saying where it's like you wouldn't see it until you talk to him and you're like, you yeah. can do everything. What the I, fuck? I had, I'll share one pretty funny story. So there's a, there's also a task force. I can probably look it up. It's called unit one task force. It's the right. elite of the elite. Oh my God. That they put in, I think it's army, Navy seals. And it's a special, it's a special program. And we met with the Colonel at the time, Colonel Coates, and we went to talk to them about building product for him. And a guy came out to the table with Colonel Coates, who they called, I believe his name was Big Red or Red. Big Red. He was huge. And he was the epitome of what you would think of as just a intense military guy who could kill you very easily. And undoubtedly, if Colonel Coates said, kill them, he would have done it in two seconds. Yeah. Oh, he was so intimidating. But listening to what he had done and his experiences, 
we were just like, wow, this guy is so amazing. But they were using flat stitch wetsuits at depth. And we're like, do you guys know that your wetsuits are just flat stitch? If you just glue them, it'll be a lot better. Yeah. And they're like, really? I was surprised by how much they didn't know about simple technology. Just, yeah. I mean, they're focused on just murdering. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I they didn't probably, like that didn't go well for us because they're like, all we have to do is glue our wetsuits? Okay, that's done. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. I want to see one photo, dude. I want to okay, see so how come here, they the are. Light. Look up Please. Big Red. <laughs> Uh, that's probably gum. I'll actually. take a quarter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> here, here, here you he's, go. He's, he's probably yeah, got no name. That's the peak of... <laughs> yeah, one more. <laughs> Anybody else need anything? Yeah. I'm good. Bartender over here. Yeah, Thanks, a, Case. I'll Beer tender. More, I'll take a little more tequila. Uh, yes, sir, uh, mister. Yeah. Easy. Stuff's delicious. I love the little top. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's nothing that? really like... There's nothing on it. It's too... It's yeah. black ops. Yeah, it's too too yeah. classified. I don't even know if I should have said that. You should have said that. <laughs> They're oh going to come God. after you. We'll edit that out. We'll edit that out. Yeah. So, so back to Mitch's, though. I'm just curious. What what was your start at Mitch's? What brought you there? And mm. obviously, you've been there for... That's a good question. How long now? Uh, Jeez, how long have I been there? Like tw- going on 24 years. Going on 24 yeah. years. Wow. But started again, I started, I started... I started um, at Caton when I was 16, and then through college, I crossed over. So I would go home to Long Beach, and then I would work at Caton in the summer, and then Mitch's in the winter. And I did that for several years, and then I just moved down to San Diego, and I stayed there, and I kept working at Mitch's. And there was times where I was going to leave, but then I didn't, and uh, I, I had a few other job opportunities, and then I started Matus in 2006, and it just worked because I was on the floor, and I could adapt everything that we needed and it made sense mm-hmm. so that's that's so why crazy. i stayed in yeah so you kind of just hear somebody talk about a wetsuit and you're like helping them try on maybe an o'neill wetsuit yeah and then you just go to your sketchbook and you're like all right i'm gonna do this better than them yeah <laughs> <laughs> no pretty much yeah I, I mean i get inspiration for everything never never once have i i could tell you definitively that i've ever ripped anyone off but yeah um yeah i i own everything that i've done and i give props to everything that other people have done so if someone else has done something good, yeah. that's that's the truth. Yeah, you know, they, did, they yeah. did great. Yeah, yeah, I can attest to that. Yeah, it's awesome. I, when I've bought in suits for me before, same yeah. same thing. Like you, you're surprised by how much he's not pushing Matus. You're yeah. just like, yeah. I mean, you just like, like I'd be the same. It. I would be the same out of like not probably not the same candor that you do it at. I'd be more awkward, just like, <laughs> oh, oh, you, you, want you don't like shirt? It, that Seeger one? That's fine. <laughs> just go to that one. It's cool. <laughs> you want that Bill of Bond? I'm good yeah. friends with, uh, I w- as a young kid, I knew Greg Wade and Ed Descoli from Excel, and they were always super kind to me and supportive. That's awesome. Um, and then uh, I know Hunter really well at O'Neill. I know some of the other, and they're all great, really, really talented designers who are who are making amazing products. So I mean, that's, that's a good... Nothing but a... That's good messaging for the industry in general, like not to, yeah, not to I, hate one another, but uh, to help each other grow, and it just helps everybody. Yep. You know, just yep. do what you want to do and let it grow overall, and that helps everybody. That's you right. Know? Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Sure. Uh-oh. What is in the water at Mitch's? Because, what is in the water at Mitch's? Yeah, because you Mitch can retain motherfuckers. Like, you guys, there's like three or Carter, four. Carter, Carter, Brent, Brent. Yeah. Dude. It's almost g- like a positive prison sentence. <laughs> <laughs> like you work there and you're like, and I put in my 50 years. Yeah, <laughs> no, I got my yeah. pension. Yeah, That's you've, sick. It's if you've honestly, been into Mitch's, you've undoubtedly rare. bumped into myself. Yes. Yep. Brett Howard, who's yep. been there the longest. Yeah. And Brett. then Carter. Carter's Carter Elliott. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, we're, we're the, the three amigos. Yeah. The three and dragon. Yep. We each uh, work basically co-general managers together and yeah. we mentor all the people that come in there and we each have a different way of approaching that, and we each have different buying responsibilities. And Mitch sits back, and he enjoys it all. But when it comes to knowing anything about something in particular detail, yeah. Mitch knows everything. I kid you not. He's done He's done it all. I mean, he's, he's just been there for so long. He's built boards. He's built bodyboards. He's made wetsuits. He's done... He's, yeah, he's Isn't done he it. early in the, the supping world? I feel like I heard yeah, he, talks of that. For not. That's all he does now is sup. But isn't yeah. he like early on the game or something? Yeah, he rides. You wouldn't believe it. He rides six foot boards. Damn. Wow. So he's riding small sups yeah. and he's doing performance surfing. Wow. I never saw him in person because it does it so five in the morning. Early. I yeah. know. I'm yeah. so lazy. Yeah. I wake up at like noon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's in the water. Like he's out of the water before you're even out. I know. Yeah. I was so he's lazy early back then. So it's how did he, back to Matt's question, how did he create that environment where you guys are like, yeah, we're going to stay for. 24 years that's a great question i i think that all of us collectively love surf and mitch has 
as a manager, he's been more, I think that he shares the wealth, you know, as fair, like he's, he's really, he's, we're family yeah, and, and you feel it hmm. and not just with Mitch, but his sisters. Um, it really, you do feel like, I almost feel like he's like a dad in a yeah. different, in a different way, but you also have to know how to learn from him because he's not the, um, he's pretty quiet. Well, he is. I was super nervous be. working he can, there. He can be, but if you touch on the right things, yeah. oh my Lord, he'll talk your ear off. But he's so knowledgeable. True. And if you listen, oh, it, yeah. I mean, invaluable. And I have a journal totally. dedicated to Oh, things. really? Oh, yeah. And you have so to yeah. listen too. The history. <laughs> yeah. 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 Honestly, when, I, when you hired me, I was really stoked. And Matson was probably mad at me being mm-hmm. an outsider. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I had like a little bit of like. Uh, Wait, why did you get hurt? Ride like no, it's. I mean, I was no, it's cool. I suck at surfing, and <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing. No, I think it was cool. Like you were my best friend, and I was just yeah. surprised. I was like, I was super surprised too. Surprised I was that, stoked. Out of, uh, you know. Yeah, I think Elliot just had good energy. He yeah. came in, and we liked his energy. And that's cool. You, I think you were working at Thalia. Yeah, at yeah. the Same time. I worked in the summers so there. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Perfect. It made sense. Mm-hmm. It made sense, uh, and it was cool. It was I didn't know. Job. I mean, I knew of Mitch's, obviously. It's why I wanted to work there. And, like, especially being at Thalia, like, that's another one of those shops where it, it people talk about it in a certain light. Mm-hmm. It's different. It's very different, for sure, than, than what Mitch's is, especially in duration. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know entirely until I started working there the depth of, like, of history and the connections of the community and how tight-knit La Jolla was. Because Matson, when we went down to, when I moved down to La Jolla, he started like introducing me to people and stuff. And I'm like, damn, this is like, everybody knows each other. And like people oh, would yeah. come in like regulars all the time. Started learning like who that guy was and who this is and how people interacted. And I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Like yeah. Dahlia, it's in Laguna Beach. Like it's similar to La Jolla with a lot of tourism yeah. and stuff, but it doesn't have the same regulars. And like it doesn't, like Mitch, Mitch is, is the personality he's like the he is Mitch's like obviously he is that energy you know even if he isn't forward about it like he attracts that energy and um it it felt weird coming as an outsider I'm like I I don't like there'd be all the groms that are like worked their way up into it and I'm like I just walked into this I think what it is is there's like uh, a heavy culture of like in history oh yeah of like surf culture around like the wind and sea era or era i don't even know there's always been an era of wind and sea you know what i mean yeah. like the 70s 60s even oh, yeah. earlier than that it's and so awesome. those guys grow up and then they have kids and those kids are like heavy hitters and then it's just I like mean, this like weird micro organ or like fucking i don't yeah. even know micro like, orgasm or <laughs> micro organism it's a micro community single yeah, cell yeah. organism it's, and i didn't even notice it was a it's, weird thing until ellie started bringing it up dude it's like, powerful yeah. yeah it like it res it hit me hard i mean just learning and being there and i was like yeah it was a, it was like a college class really i would go there and like do my homework you know, on oh, the yeah. side you know yeah. but still i was like Damn, there is so much to learn. There from is. This. There's That's a lot to learn. I get why you stay there for sure. Like, there's a lot, I, especially in wetsuits. It's my community. Exactly. It, yeah. But the funny thing is, I'm like you. I was an outsider, right? I came down. I'm. I grew up in Long Beach, uh, and I came down to go to college. I got. And you asked me how I got the job. I got the job through a guy I knew from Caton, who was selling us bodyboards named Brent Cole. We call him BC. He's one of the local bodyboarders in La Jolla that okay. has worked his way up and people love him, you know, yeah. um, he got me the job there and I was an outsider. People hated me. Oh, hey, I almost quitted. So I quit. I almost quit so many times. Yeah. And some of my best friends who worked next door at El Pescador today, or yeah. my close friends hated me back then. Wow. One, <laughs> I was considered a bodyboarder. Mm-hmm. I, ironically, I actually started stand up surfing before I bodyboarded and I started bodyboarding because I grew up surfing Southside Seal Beach, yeah. heavy slab wave. It just makes sense. Yeah. And I do, I do everything, but people labeled me bodyboarder. Yeah. So they hated me and, uh, I had to prove myself, go out, surf when it's bigger, Yeah. you know, do all those kind of fun things. But then yeah. you, you win over people with kindness over the time. Yeah. Um, and then also, you know, sometimes people mistake kindness for weakness and you have to draw the line. And when that line is drawn yeah. and we're Viking, they don't want to mess with that line. <laughs> oh, yeah. I saw it a couple of times, yeah. dude. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I knew you as like an absolute sweetheart, like the nicest dude. And then there'd be times at the shop where you had to like 
control it, you know, whatever, like a customer comes in who's just rowdy or something. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. And I'm like, damn, like this dude can turn it on. Like <laughs> you can control that shit, you yeah. know, which is an awesome skill, honestly, to be able to do that. But then flip it back to like, all right, we're all yeah. cool here. You know, was that was that line drawn <laughs> like what, on the on the beach ever? Or what, what's oh, the memory yeah. you have I, of that? When I grew up, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the first time my mom dropped me off at the beach and she let me go surf by myself. I got in a fight, but not <laughs> not that I wanted to. I was like 14 years old. She left me there, and a like 18 year old said that I said something to him, hit me with brass knuckles in the side of the head, oh. split my ear open, and he what? couldn't believe that he didn't knock me out, and so he ran off. So I was just sitting there bleeding, and there was this tourist couple with a family just like freaking out because they saw this blood yeah. coming from my ear. But yeah, they're, they're, when I grew up, there was times where definitely things were handled on the beach. And you fought, yeah. and after the fight was done, it was cool. Like no one, I mean, it was like literally fisticuffs, yeah. and it was cool. Yeah. But that was that was a part of surfing. And the interesting thing, you guys live here in San Clemente. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, you had no idea how to get to any of the surf spots. T Street was one of them. Yeah. I had no idea what T Street was or how to find it, but I saw <laughs> try try fal, try fuck alert. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's <laughs> oh, like, like, like the square is that like this? This has to be it. Yeah. I followed it all the way down. Lo and behold, I found Boom. T Street. Yeah. That's so funny. There wasn't surf line. Yeah. There was a fax, but that really didn't help much. You didn't know what the surf was doing until you showed up. Yeah. Yeah. But that's going back to the old scale. Yeah. Like yeah. Old school days. <laughs> Map quest. Yeah. I, yeah. I still yeah. think like Mitch's is su such an enigma to me of that whole like old school where you guys are staying there for so long. I can't think of any other shops of like people, managers that stay for that long. Yeah, there, I'm sure there are. Uh, I mean, old stores would be a Caton. A Caton yeah. is an old store. Yeah. Hanson's undoubtedly an old yeah. store. Yeah. You have other stores that mirror us on the East Coast, but Mitch's for certain is in probably the top six stores yeah. that have been around for that long from the same owner. Yeah. Yeah, and then Mitch opened the Solana location, I think, in the early 80s, and his sister runs that one. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. He, yeah, he, uh, I mean Thalia and Hanson's two of our favorite shops collectively. Like, yeah. of course, other than Mitch's, I just feel like they have a different vibe going. Where younger crews come up, people get to manager, and then it just kind of like recycles through. Yeah, it does. But it's such an enigma to have people at Mitch's where it builds like a full family. It has both. Yeah. I mean, it, you years. have all the nude roms coming up, and yep. the legends that have been there for yeah, a while. Yeah, it's yeah. like a legend. I know. Legend. There, there's know. a strong alumni system. Oh, yeah. It's amazing because yeah, you have yeah. yourself. Uh, I mean, you know, then you have uh, Devin Howard, Aaron Smith, Brandon Lillard. I mean, geez, there's like, it's endless. Yeah, it's there's endless. so many people that have done amazing things I in know. the industry that have come to there. That's Is great. there a yeah. Hall of Fame? Uh, there's a big, pretty, there's this large Hall of Fame. We should get Elliot yeah. on there. Yeah. <laughs> no. Dude, yeah. I was barely there. Yeah. I was barely there, but I've acted very well. <laughs> <laughs> I was quiet, professional. <laughs> no, I think, I think, you're, I think you're right there. I think Mitch's is an enigma in that sense of yeah. like just retaining employees in that way. One, two, being in the same spot. Uh, forever and then three being owned by the same person like mm -hmm. all of that is just unheard of um, and it's very very cool to see and it undoubtedly makes this like cool mystic place like yeah you're, you're just yeah. excited to go there or it, nervous or nervous <laughs> yeah and <laughs> both yeah it's yeah. like gosh it's a weird place that like can yeah. make you nervous even though I know I'm gonna see you or Brett or you know Carter or any of the other people that work there that I'm fucking been known, know. known forever. <laughs> but as soon as I go in there, I'm like, uh, like I'm looking everywhere, like, and then and then you warm up, like as soon as someone says hi, and then you're like, okay, it's all good. But yeah, yeah, it's got that effect. It's really interesting, which yeah. you probably don't even notice. No, I do. I I mean, I think depending on who you interact with, we, we're really focused on good customer service, so mm -hmm. we're trying to be polite to everyone. And I yeah. think 99 percent of the time that happens. Yeah. yeah. Um. But with every, I mean, even with Matus, you know, sometimes you have bad experiences, uh, you know, or even at Mitch's, you have a customer who is upset about something. You just need to listen to him. And I'm sure you experience yeah. that too. I don't know if Rick, whatever returns, but what's yeah. maybe a little different. But uh, just listen to them, understand where they're coming from, and sympathize and figure out how to problem solve. Mm -hmm. And usually everything's get yeah, everything gets put put in place. Yeah. Do you have any? Um, this is a little bit of a curveball here, but I was thinking. I was because really good at hitting curveballs. <laughs> <laughs> I bet, player? honestly. Huh? Yeah. You're a baseball player? I was a baseball player, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I played. I played a lot of sports, but yeah, I was. I loved curveballs. Do you want to play on a slow pitch? Yeah, yeah, we have a slow pitch team, and oh, we're yes. almost yeah. undefeated. Oh, almost. Yeah. yeah. Does that mean we're seven? Well, you tied? Matt I missed Tim a game. Left us. He's our coach, and he bailed on his team one <laughs> night. And uh, we, we are lost. seven and one. We're in first place. We're doing great. We're doing great. We could yeah, use another great. Great. time. <laughs> Honestly, it'd be a blast though if you're down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But what's your curveball? Sorry. My curveball. No, you're good. I'm glad you can hit curveballs though, because that's going to help this question. Um. Do you have any crazy celebrities who have uh, jumped into wetsuits or anything like that? Jumped into wetsuits? Oh. I mean, that would be very hard to jump into a wetsuit. Yeah, I'm tight. sure someone's done it, but uh, pulled over five minutes, pulled it over their skin. Uh, let's see. <laughs> well, Sorry. but the most recent one, most people don't even, well, Bo Derek from 10. Wow. The movie. Yeah. She's amazing. That was the last person who I was like, this, she is the salt of the earth. Yeah. So sweet. I don't know who that is. Can you look her up? Yeah. Most people don't. I think, it, I think it has Uh-oh. to do, she, you know, she's a aging she's actress, but stunning. she's still Eli's stunning. asleep. Do you oh, mean, searching? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bo yeah. Derek. Yeah. And, uh, she was famous for, uh, the movie. Yeah. There she is. Yeah. She, she's amazing. Oh wow! Okay. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So you recognize yeah. that photo? Yeah, you that photo left? to the right. <laughs> yeah, I know the <laughs> one with her with the brains. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, one her, the one when she's all, yeah. you know, all right. aged like a fine wine. I would say she's one of my favorites. It just what do you mean favorites? Well, as far as people, I've, people I've met. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was like, yeah, she's that's a that's an interesting thing though. Like jumping into wetsuits is that a factor of like how fast you could put on a wetsuit ever? Oh uh, no! no. I don't no. Like, like oh, wetsuit. you could put this on <laughs> extra fast. There's no easy. Some way. people do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no easy way. I got one. I mean, joke about this all the time. Um, you ever think about how wetsuits are just essentially um, leotards? Yeah. <laughs> like for, just a bunch for of men. Like we're just men. all a bunch of men yeah. in like leotards. I do. I do. Yeah. Actually, I, I, it's so funny you say that because, okay. Um, I love a long arm spring, and that's like one of my favorite silhouettes yeah. in the summer. Most I people like Swordsley Fools. I'm a long arm spring guy. Yeah. Yeah. But if you ask me to wear a pair of geo shorts, which is a short that we wear, the body surfers will wear, yeah. with a wetsuit top, I'll never do it. No chance. Although the silhouette is still a long arm spring, yeah. I feel so exposed in that, that oh, kind yeah. of combo. Because it's a two yeah. piece. It's a two piece. Yeah. And it just feels leotardy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I think it's, it's so too. funny when you're like, yeah. like, Getting aggressive with like a um, some other guy yeah. in the water, and you're just like two dudes, and there's like two dudes in leotards, just leotards. Laugh. Like imagine the water wasn't there, and you're just sitting on these boards, like no, yeah. Like, it'd be like some weird play. That's yeah. so funny. Oh, that is. Yeah, I know. Imagine people crazy. playing basketball and just eliminate the ball. You guys ever thought about that? No, like, never. It's just people just like, oh my like, god, they're like screaming yeah. and stuff. It's all the it. same. Yeah. <laughs> Getting rid of one element of anything is pretty yeah, funny. I know. Like imagine if that mic wasn't there, you just be, oh, you'd just be talking to me. Like, <laughs> I'd just be talking to you. <laughs> There's that one we we've, we've watched it a few times, but there's a music video that's redubbed. I don't know if redubbed it's is the, the right word because they it's a uh, was it Mick Jagger and Dancing David in the Street? Bowie Dancing in the Street, oh. and they remove the music. The music is the music video that. where they don't really play it or sing it. I've seen it. You saw that? Yeah, That's dude, so that video funny. went viral. Yeah, yeah. it is unbelievable. It is I think it's faked, like the extra breathing. Yeah, and stuff, sure. right? <laughs> yeah, like it's they add so to it a funny. little bit. Yeah, for sure. That's like Spencer Sterling style. Yeah, like it's, he's yeah, fully it. someone fully just made fun of. Absolutely it. legendary video. There you go. What are we getting hit for now? The trip of life. Oh, Expedia. Yeah. All right. That's uh, what's happening. Um, just a girl traveling on her own. So I, can I ask you guys a yeah. question? Oh, hit it. Um, we'll just have this in the background. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> you guys are at X with Seeger right now. Yeah. What is your... Why? What, 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 how do you see this? Ba- what do you want out of Seeger? What do Seeger? we want to yeah. go? I'm just curious. Like, What are your goals over the next yeah. two years? What are you guys focused on? Mm. Honestly, for me, we got three founders here. Yeah, no, yeah. and they're all going to be different. Too. Be that's, different what we, no, that's what we love. Huh? Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. But there's well, a good chance. First of all, let me different. premise this with: that we have very clear goals uh, <laughs> financially. <laughs> Undoubtedly, <laughs> smart yeah. business. But yeah. like, let's say this in like a more of a <laughs> yeah. This is like a personal fun a personal thing. way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This isn't. I'm. I'm not at talking yeah. like P and Ls, and you have to hit certain. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's for the. Yeah, that's for the marketing calendars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to go first? You want to go in a row? I thought you were just answering. Yeah, you're about to go. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Um, For me personally, it is to continue, which it's gotten gotten a little bit harder as we've gotten bigger, which I'm sure you can attest to where, you know, 
the bigger the size of the company, the more stress and the less you can kind of have fun with it and be a little more free flow. When we first started, we were again, living at the warehouse, having a good time, walking to the breweries, like on our off time and just kind of like being a little more road maybe. Yeah. And so for me, it's like, I want to continue growing, but continue keeping the spirit and the energy and the fun of the company alive because that has opened up like this podcast and all these random weird ventures that we get into like it, it keeps the spirit of like we could just try anything and just keep growing what even if it's not growing the business like we're talking about with PLs like maybe we're not like trying to double down or whatever we're trying to just grow ourselves as a company and as individuals like just keeping that spirit alive is the hardest thing but to me the most important thing for a brand like us to do yeah you know well said Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank so, you, Case. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, I could, uh, I could go on top of that for my own. Go on top of it. You want to go on top uh, of it? On yeah. top of it. I could go on top of his idea, not him personally. But okay. what if my idea was <laughs> a man, Case? Okay. <laughs> uh, um, okay. No, but I, I mean, I agree with every single <laughs> part of that. I think, in more like layman's terms of the brand, I think yeah. like diversifying and expanding what Seeger is, right? So, like, if the goal is to have fun, be ourselves, keep doing things that we want to do, yeah. so what areas can we do that in? Can we make a wetsuit? Can Seeger make a wetsuit? Absolutely. I think so. Like, that, that is something that we can do. you trying to compete with Matus? What are you saying? <laughs> can we collaborate on a wetsuit? <laughs> yes. Um, like, the more areas where we could work with partners and just expand the brand to say, like, we could yeah. work with Matus to make a wetsuit. We could work with X to make a beer. We could have a ranch for as a property where we host venues and concerts um just just diversifying like what seager really is has yeah. always been a goal of ours and it's just something that yeah the brand becomes three-dimensional yeah, yeah it becomes Connected. who we are and right. what we want to do yeah so, diversifying the yeah. portfolio if you will yeah, yeah if you will there you go yeah. mr businessman <laughs> yeah um he's our mentor <laughs> he's a good mentor <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna take that thank, thank you. you take it run um, with it Get on top of it. <laughs> uh, I would say for me, um, and these guys know this, I've it, owning a clothing brand and being in like a lifestyle of the surf and Western scene has been like a dream of mine since uh, I can't even tell you how long. So this is like a, like a long living dream that I've been in. It's great. I love it. And every waking second that it continues to go on for, I'm just stoked to be a part of it. So for the future, I just want to hope, hopefully it just continues. Yeah. Um, I want to do exactly what those both, th those <laughs> two fools were saying about Thank you. the same things that they Thank were you. saying and getting on top of each other. <laughs> That's what we do um, here at Seeger. And, and on top of that, uh, just making sure that everything runs smoothly so we can continue to do this. And that means growing the family, getting, hiring more peop people, uh, getting more products in our hands and diversifying that that whole scene um, i want to make cooler better quality products and just keep growing in that sense yeah all right uh, yeah i'm gonna ask one more question yeah hit it so you each have different operational roles within yeah. the company yeah however yeah when you guys check in with each other yeah on all the big things that you need you you guys come powwow mm. yeah and and move forward synthesize say yes this is how we're gonna move yeah yeah that's cool yeah i like it like, wait, was that the question? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I, just, oh. I was like, we all said yeah. the hammer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You, I'm just saying that you, you oh, we have all distinct, come together. distinct roles in the yeah, company, yeah. but I think it's so important for you guys to totally check in with each other to see how you're yeah. feeling. It's very healthy. Because if you let that distance go yeah. too long, totally time lapses and things happen. So yeah. it's like, you can, I think you just need to constantly you need to stay close really yeah. within a company i mean you saw our office like we're just yep breathing over each other essentially yeah i like to call it the three -headed, <laughs> i like to call it the three-headed dragon because yeah we're a hydra for sure because we're all we, <laughs> that's what we are yeah we all have our different personalities and and they're also similar in different ways and, yeah. and we just kind of like nip at each other every once in a while but at the same time we have this like thriving body that we need to keep alive mm -hmm. That's my best analogy awesome. for it. And yeah. Mike Lesher, too, which you said you were a fan of that episode. Yep. He's the one that told us, because he's been a part of all three of the big companies, yeah, right? Yeah. He basically said, like, when you're in this situation, 
you do need to sit down and put a bottle of whiskey in between you two yeah. and drink it and hash it out. Three. Yeah. Which, what did you say? He said two. Oh, yeah, three. That's so awkward. Three. <laughs> yeah, who is it? Uh, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to plug that. If people have not watched that episode, yeah, watch Mike it. Lesher, watch it. It's really good. But yeah. Anyone who cares about the surf industry or just uh, the intricacies of how surf worked and looking at it, you have to imagine those brands were small. Oh, yeah. Small, it's like yourself. Think, yeah. That just went kaboom. Every yeah. time he gives us advice, we're like, dude, it's yeah. such a different world. Yeah. Like, it's a, talking it, about decades apart. I think yeah. you've had some really good guests on here. And if yeah. they have not listened to, if they're only listening to this one, yeah. I'm sorry, you're wasting your time. <laughs> <laughs> but go and listen to the uh, Kevin Bailey. Is also, like, yeah, that was a good yeah. one too. I, I couldn't believe cool. that guy was mosh pitting. Yeah, yeah I was right. like, oh, what? Yeah. yeah, that blew my mind when <laughs> yeah, he said that. I did. I know. I, I think it's so cool stoked. that you were listening to that. Oh, I love I think it. That's yeah, awesome. yeah. I would yeah. listen to it in bed. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. And I'm like, what would I ask people that you know? I just, yeah. I, lo- I love what you guys are, what you're doing here. Thank you. And you would crush your own podcast, dude. You should definitely do yeah. that. Yeah, you would crush it. Yeah. And we love what you're doing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we do. You make <laughs> a great definitely. wetsuit, man. Yeah, absolutely great wetsuit. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, what is, um, I know you talked about the new wetsuit that we can't probably hash too much about the, mm-hmm. I'm going to say. What was the name again? Anti-2 gravi- gravitational. <laughs> Chapter 1. No, keep going. Ask your physics on me. Unit yeah, yeah. 1. Dual, dual gravity dual insulation. Dual gravity insulation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's technically what it is because you're taking okay. a dive gravity and a surf gravity, which are two different moduluses of density compared to the ocean you water. Them together. And you put them together. So a diver. So you're getting a suit that's really, you're, it, it'll be interesting to see how people respond to it because aesthetically, yeah. people can rip it off visually. They be like, "Oh, it looks like this," but it doesn't mm. function the same. So I'm, I'm. What is the interested this? to see? What's that? Is this like this is hidden information? This is well, how you build it. It is. There's certain yeah. ratios and how you build it and what gravity you put with one another. Yeah. And then there's an exposed chamber, the size of that chamber. All of these little things make a big difference in how it's it's used and Damn. how it functions. Oh, I can't so wait to see it. I chuckle only in that knowing how people are. Sometimes people try and duplicate that, that look. For instance, when we did hidden chamber technology, yeah. everybody laughed at it. They're like, this doesn't work. And we're like, no, it, it does. And yeah. then it proceeded to be on every wetsuit. Every wetsuit yeah. from then on. Yeah. But th- I won't even get into it, but yeah. th- they, they didn't do it right. Do you, um, and you don't have to answer this question to the T, but, do you see you guys? Do you see Matus expanding into different categories of wetsuits, like say a camouflage uh, spearfishing wetsuit or anything like that? Uh, I think that could be potential. Uh, I think immediately where we see a lot of traction is more tri. But uh-huh. what that tri is, that triathlete is, we think of more as like multi sport, like training, mm. uh-huh. and how that looks for someone who's even a surfer. Yeah. I think really serious surfers who ride big waves, they they don't surf to stay in shape. They are working out. Yeah. And work to you Preparing know this, for exactly it. Yeah. yeah and and make but at the same time I think you one thing we need to do is communicate that to a more anyone can go out in the water and just have a good time and go work out yeah and it, you don't have to take it so serious it can be fun yeah like go get in the ocean and go mm-hmm. for a swim yeah that's amazing yeah there's uh, you yeah. know so there's when you say triathlon or triathlete wetsuits a certain stigma comes out like. Like I you have need to, go to fast. Yeah. Yeah. No, just go out and have a good time, get in the water and get some exercise. Or even like if you're looking at that wetsuit on your website, you're like, Oh, yeah. I don't do triathlons, but I wish I could. Yeah. And then I won't you know what I mean? Yeah. And then yeah. potentially dive. Yeah. Dive is a whole nother type of material and how it's built and whatnot. But again, we're 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 small. Yeah. So that's a cool or an interesting technique, I guess, to like start at where you make wetsuits for the triathletes, military, navy seals. All these like really high end stuff, and yeah. it goes down from there. High performance. Like, anybody can wear it, you know what I mean? But you are making it for the ultimate best. Yep. Which is really cool. I agree. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. I wish we were like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We're, we're just getting down there. home, all right? We're just down we're home. Getting we're, getting there. There. <laughs> <laughs> we're the guys who sleep in till 10. <laughs> <laughs> you really? You guys sleep no, in until then? No, we don't. No. <laughs> it's just part of the what image. The <laughs> I'm kidding. Let's we say out. what time we all out. wake up. I worked. I worked out. This what time morning. do you wake up on? I, average? I was done working out before you woke up this morning. What time do you wake up on average? Three a.m. Come on, look real. at me. Be real. Every day, probably like six forty-five. That's pretty good. Like six. Do you guys surf? Six fifteen often. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Yeah, working. honestly, now that we're down in South County, yeah. it's a lot easier. Like we'll just go down to Trestles before work. 
versus when we were up in Costa Mesa, it was like kind of hit or miss. Like Huntington was pretty consistent, but now what, that we're down. What here, was the question? This uh, time of year, I always time say. <laughs> No, no. The question was, do you surf? Yeah, I was wondering oh, if you guys oh, are oh. surfing a little bit. This yeah. time of year, yeah, the past couple of years, too I much always, work going on. Yeah, I end up saying like, oh, I quit surfing because I hadn't surfed in like a month at this time of year. Mm-hmm. I feel like this year, now that we're in San Clemente, we're going it's so at much least easier. a couple times a week. Yeah, if so much like, easier. Obviously, this week there's no waves. Yeah, but that's good. Wind yeah. or surf, we're getting out. We there. miss a lot of the swell I mean, compared to you, though. Yeah. Lowers and just trestles in general is a yeah. world-class way. I know. Oh, it's, so fun. it's such a privilege to have that. And there's a beautiful mountain bike trail yeah. right here, too, by I, the way. Yeah, I rarely get out of the bubble. Like, literally. I, know, if I, I go surf you. blacks, that is yeah. that's out, that's out. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I call it shit. I don't know why I would drive From, that far. I, I live right at Horseshoe. Yeah. So Might I well pop out there yeah, all why the time. Leave. And then if I go anywhere, it's like, I'm going to go north or south yeah. within maybe a, a mile of that. I don't blame you. I just say, though, like, being from La Jolla, which you were the opposite. You were from somewhere else and came into La Jolla, but mm-hmm. moving away from La Jolla and going up to like Newport and everyone has their own different opinion, but like because there's so many coves and different angles, I swear there's always something to surf. Always. La Jolla. Yeah. yeah. Like there always is. And moving up here, I was like, oh, it's blown out and shitty right here. Like, okay, I guess that's it. I can't yeah, go anywhere yeah. else. Yeah. I would so, say <laughs> San Clemente has a similar. Yeah. It's definitely not similar because there's not as many reefs, but yeah. You could always surf somewhere in San Clemente. Newport, it can get blown out very fast. Yeah, maybe yeah, we also have sand, though. It was, it was so like, like depressing. It was, it was like, always it's just like a big, long beach, and if something's not breaking, it's all not breaking. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. I mean, eventually it gets good, and then everything's good. So, But, uh, yeah, I miss I miss that for sure. Yep. So you're in a good spot. Yep, I agree. But still, San Clemente is great. San Clemente is <laughs> yeah. great. Newport well, doesn't. It doesn't <laughs> have, still doesn't it have so much reach, heat for that. So good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Speaking of Newport, did you see the guy that Grand Theft Auto that boat? Oh, yes. yeah, that stole that yacht and started smashing boats. Oh, that's what it was. I saw it, but I didn't realize that was the story. I figured it looked like yeah. something like that had happened. Gnarly, and it was yeah. right in front of one of my my freshman year in college roommate. Just right just in front it. of his house. Well, it was my freshman year. Yeah. I was very specific. It was my it was sophomore. It was a year. good <laughs> friend of mine as well. It's a good friend of mine. I played I played volleyball with him. So did Matson. We went to college with him. Our buddy Max. Shout out. <laughs> he, it was right in front of his house. Right in front of it. Literally like you can see right in front of his house. <laughs> yeah, just blasted all the like, Was that your boat? And he was like, Dude. No, it's our neighbors. But yeah, I know it was crazy. Dude, a woman came out of the boat. Wait, what? I saw a video from a different angle, and she like came out of the boat and they're like people in filming are like oh my god are you okay it's like crazy oh the boat that got smashed yeah i was gonna say i wonder why that guy did it i was well, thinking of like maybe he cheated driver? or someone got cheated on just and stole a boat <laughs> like, why like, do you steal a yacht and smash yachts like you're you're fucked like at that yeah, point there's no way out of that of dollars. yeah, in jail yeah. For life. there's got to be some sort of like someone slept with someone right i think he just <laughs> the only explanation i think he straight up stole it turned out like knew how to turn it on and then didn't know how to drive it I think that was what it is. What? Like he couldn't get out of the harbor. He's like, fuck, oh shit, I don't know how to go. I would have no idea. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be honest. Your grandpa tried to show me how to drive the boat, and I just laughed at him. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I have no idea what you're saying right now. Talking to the wrong guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, great guy. We should, we should get a good La Jolla day in. Yeah. Like, obviously, you're from La Jolla, so it's different for you. But yeah. it's nice for me to go to La Jolla. Hang out with Matus. Go to El Pescador. Look at him. I want to do that. That's nice for me, too. (laughs) (laughs) It's like a vacation. I know. I get to, like, go down there. I think you guys need to do a fishing trip to Alaska. Oh, fuck yeah. That's the trip that you guys need to do. That sounds sick. I'm down. I think you guys would like that. Yeah. There's some places in Yucatan. Where you can go. We were talking about doing. There's waves we? in Yucatan. There, there are is. waves. Yeah. yeah. You would. Have you been there? No. But oh. we've we looked at it. Yeah. We've, briefly. We've talked about doing. This might be like early. You have to. We talked about doing a surf hunting trip to Alaska. We surf. Um, Alaska. Alaska yeah. is my favorite place in the world. It's beautiful. I could yeah. live there. I okay. love it. We should do a trip together. Yeah. We should. I would yeah. love to do that trip. That, that would be great. Cool. My dad would come. I would Hell love yeah. to have your dad there. <laughs> Let's do it. That been, sounds awesome. Yeah, Let's we've been it. talking about doing like a documentary style like surf film where we have a surfer go up yeah. and then we have a hunter that is like more localized to uh, Alaska. Yep. And then the surfer teaches the hunter how to surf and the hunter teaches the, the surfer how to surf. Oh, yeah. I like it. That'd Bridging the gap. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That is mm-hmm. cool. So it'd be like a meat eater episode, but yep. with surfing. Let's yep. uh, yeah. let's let's talk about this. Surf eater. Love it. Yeah. Let's do this thing. Yeah, I go up. I go up there once a year. Actually, I go into Glacier Bay National Park. So fly into Yucatan, and then we take another prop plane into uh, Johnny's East River Lodge, 
but mm. it's really hard to get in there. But my dad's had a great relationship with them, and Damn. we go every September for a week and go get coho yeah. silvers and bring back like fifty to hundred pound. Well, Jeez. I bring back like fifty pounds of wow. salmon to the house. Oh my god, love it. What's the weather like in September in, Al- in it, Alaska? Uh, it can be nice, but generally it's raining. And the day that it rains a ton, usually the fishing is phenomenal because all the fish can come in. Mm. And then the next day it's pretty bad, but it's so beautiful. You have large trumpeter uh, geese and then you have moose and I mean, you have everything there. You literally feel like you are in danger any moment you're outside the cabin. That sounds amazing. Can you I mean, not in a up? bad way. I'm mean, just, you know that you're a part of the yeah, food chain immediately. Yeah, that's so yeah. crazy. Yeah, I love not, it. Not those Asian um, drinks. You're cold, what's the lodge called? Yeah, Katet. Uh, Johnny's East River Lodge. My grandpa, as Elliot was saying, was a captain for yes. 70 years. Yep. And he took a boat up all the way up there um, when I was like eight years old. And so we flew up there and met him. <laughs> and uh, I caught a king wow. salmon. And it was oh so fun. It was bigger than me. How big? It was. I don't. I have yeah. a photo, and I'm wow. like, I'm like this. <laughs> so sick. Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, right? see, that's Mount. Okay, see the photo you're looking at yeah. there. That's Mount Fairweather in the background. That is gorgeous. So literally, wow. that's what you're you're fishing like that, and that's a nice day, not raining, gorgeous, catching anywhere from ten to twenty pound oh, silvers yeah. that are running in, oh, sick. and you keep three a day, and then uh, that's the bring man. it home and eat it. Wow. What's the water temp there? Look at those. Uh, oh, water temp's not that. You're you're in dry waders, so you're oh, you're cozy. So you just wear some nice fleece pants underneath, and you're good to go. So you're fly fishing. That's oh, yeah. look at that. You can fly fish, yeah, but we're we're using um, spinning rods. Oh, okay. Gorgeous. Let's yeah, do this thing. I yeah. know. I'm down. And then I, and then I go hunting in um, in November, in South Dakota. Where do you hunt over there? Pheasant. Pheasant hunting. Yeah, but not, yeah. nothing like, goes yeah. to waste. Take all those feathers, yeah. dye the feathers. The, the rumps on the pheasants are perfect for dyeing, and then we tie flies with them for fly fishing in May. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. That's really fucking cool. sick. Yeah. Wow. I don't know how we got on this tangent, but... Yeah. I love it, though. I, I, it's down. Brand. I personally could live in Montana like that Yeah. Uh, yeah. if there's waves there. I, I, I just... I love Absolutely. Once I they make I think that, there will be. Yeah, they'll like add... I honestly do. The Australia <laughs> thing? We're we'll just be neighbors. Like, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I just buy a mega ranch. No, I think that... I think surf ranches or whatever, like, wave pools are going to be so much more prolific and, and... Not prolific. Once the cost goes more, down... That's going to change the, there's six, the U.S., honestly, there's, or the world. There are six surf pools or wave pools coming to Palm Springs. Six? Yeah, I think. That is four. way too saturated. That's it's a crazy. desert. They it might be four. Water there. I might be wrong about six. I don't know. Don't there's a lot. But there's it's yeah. crazy. That's way too many. Have you guys surfed a wave pool yet? Yeah, yeah we went to Waco. Bad. Oh, no way. I haven't done it. So Fun? sick. It was sick. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it was it's, frustrating. It feels a little dangerous, honestly, in really? a way. It's just like in what shallow way? concrete. Uh, oh, it's concrete. Yeah, well, it's concrete. Well, well, it needed also, a hard surface to like be able to you want, are you be consistent or just something to, like that. Just to clarify, I, think it's not, so. I wouldn't say it's dangerous. To no, no, cool, no, 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 no. But you will die, for sure. No, no, no. As you get to the inside, it gets shallower and shallower. So at the end of the wave, it could be three to four feet deep. But you'd have to fully slam and like bang your head off. Yeah, the you'd have to like not. I mean, I snapped my board or Brandon's board like within one. Well, that's different because the whitewash will just actually like actually just like slam it yeah. into the shore. <laughs> it was one of those things that's just like. It's cool. You go there and you're like, I'm going to land so many airs. It's like a, just an air machine. That's great. All the pros do it. And then you get there and you're like, oh, this is harder. That's right. You guys took your team there, right? We yeah. did. Yeah. 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 That was, was super fun. got to see how, how much they, they surf pretty well. It's yeah. cool. They yeah, yeah, they, they do. Great. Who was on that trip? For Skip, your team riders, um, Skip, Skip, Tristan, Brady, Brady, and oh yeah, they, yeah. They also and so Brandon, well. they do. Hawkins. Yeah, that's Brandon another Hawkins. thing we share. We we mm. actually have a shared, shared team riders. How weird yeah, is that? Yeah. That's awesome. I yeah. love it. I think there's such good is synergy that, there. Mm-hmm. Is that called something like Eskimo Brothers? But like, <laughs> is there like a term for that where we share surfers? Sure. <laughs> what, I don't one? know if they'd want to. Which ones are shared? Uh, well, I'm just, you, you sponsor Skip, Skip, Skip Tristan, or Tristan, the top two, I think. yeah, that's the two. Yeah, okay. and, that, and who that's else it. is on your team? Well, there's Brady, there's Christian, oh, okay. and there's yeah, but oh, the other two guys are XL riders. Yeah, okay, so yeah, so yeah, yeah those two. Bra- uh, uh, the La Jolla well, boys. I know Brady. He's like he's like a brother. Yeah, but Tristan and Skip. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's yeah. awesome. Brady's not good enough. <laughs> no, Brady, Brady <laughs> rips. Actually, yeah, he Brady does. Surfs, yeah, super well. I love you, Brady. I know. Yeah. Madsen's really rough on him. <laughs> okay, come on. Well, he's like a little bro. Yeah, the, little. <laughs> I think <laughs> the average the, the average surfer 
in La Jolla surfs a lot better than most. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, fa- I figured sure. that out. Yeah. 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 Figured out the hard way. No. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. I don't even know what that means. To be honest. <laughs> I wonder if Brady will cry when he sees this. No, nah, he'll laugh. He'll laugh. He'll, he'll laugh. He'll he'll <laughs> takes it really well, honestly. <laughs> no, he'll he can take a verbal shit. beating. No, he tries. <laughs> he, he's <laughs> he's a great he's a great barrel rider too. Oh yeah. 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 He's a really good intuitive surfer. He's, yeah. he's an OG Seeger ambassador too. One of the one of the most OG Seeger yeah. surfers. I love I yeah, love to watch. Sure. It's so funny. I I love watching good surfing, yeah. even though I ride everything. I'm definitely a critic, and I can tell you, for instance, I've known Tristan since he was a little kid, and he would go up every time and do a reverse, reverse yeah. air, oh my reverse God. air, yeah. reverse yeah. air, yes, reverse air. Yeah. And I'd be like, Tristan, I bet you can't do a forward air. Like yeah. just yeah. spin the other way. And then so he'd start doing them. And as soon as he could land it well, he went right back to doing the reverses. Yeah. But it's just fun to watch people progress and push yeah. themselves. And these guys surf so well. So they yeah, do. Oh, my Lord. I yeah. know. Just naturally gifted, these guys. Absolutely. I know. They're naturally gifted is, yeah. a huge, is, a big, is a big part of it. Yeah. And then we're also forgetting, which I think you've sponsored in the past. I don't know if you still do, but Matt Allen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. 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 So he's, he's a, a full mountain player. climber now. Yeah. That's cool. He needs some sort of like mountain suit. Yeah. Um, he's like looking a to be a firefighter. Stand. Is he really? Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I think he already is. Yeah. Oh, really? Well, but sorry, Matt. I didn't know. Yeah. That. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're good. naturally gifted people for sure. Like you see them, like talk about leotards. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're they're acrobats in the water. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, when we're at Waco, it's like, did you just do like a McTwist? Like, I what know. The f- That's crazy. They're insane. And we were just like watching film after. I was like, this is the most athletic surfing endeavor i've ever been a part of like we're like <laughs> analyzing film and then going back and i was yeah. like damn yeah. dude this is yeah. are you gonna put any clips of you up <laughs> <laughs> you don't no? want that you don't know yeah. those, were, those were amazing though <laughs> yeah no you know what skip was actually very encouraging yeah he was skip yeah. was awesome he's Thank always you, skip. encouraging yeah he is yeah i am the opposite of skip let's just said, you're, you're, you're not you're not bad <laughs> i'm not bad i'm no, not bad i'm like skip's the type of guy to yeah. be like dude you fucking rip are you kidding yeah, me yeah i know it's i know so sick yeah i, know. I yeah. will say he too skip is one of the most positive I know. brothy surfers i have ever met yeah. ever yeah, yeah. He's, he's so, so he's so humble positive. he's yeah. so humble it's mm-hmm. crazy yeah. i've i've been out in surf where i have definitely been I like to put my sh- push myself and yeah. surf. Yeah, I've I've been out on days where he's been out at certain waves, uh, and he's definitely a lot more comfortable than I am. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you're, but but it's it's fun to watch. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's insane. It's also yeah. funny, like you were saying, the positivity that he like just gives off. He will be and we'll be in shitty surf, and he'll be like, "Dude, it's firing right now. It's so good. Are you <laughs> kidding?" And and you're like, most people would be like, "Dude, shut up. Stop being sarcastic." But for whatever reason, he means it. Yeah, he, he just like truly he believes. He's yeah. frothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I remember surfing PB Point when he was this big, and Monty would take him out there, and he was ripping when he was like five years old. Yeah. And you're like, "Who the heck?" Are, oh, it's Skip. And then yeah. you just yeah. So yeah, Monty since he was too. a little kid. Shout out Monty. Yeah. 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 Fucking crushes it. Yeah, he surfs well too. The whole family. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's legends. Rad. It's in the blood. Yeah. It's yeah. in the blood for sure. It's in something that they're doing. You think Mitch was named after Mitch's? Well, that's a good question. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it could be. His brother Mitch. His brother Mitch. You think? I don't Only know. one way to find out. Skip named after uh, Skip. Oh my God. Skip, Skip Fry. Fry. Holy shit. Definitely. Oh, that, Holy that's shit. probably it. Mitch's I bet you Skip Fry. It's got to be Skip. Yeah. Wait, yeah. because Monty's a big fan. Monty just named his kids after Mitch's. After stuff. La Jolla Legends. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. That's wow. smart. Wait, That's how have I not smart. thought about this? I don't Elliot, know. what are you going to name your kids? Or I was thinking of going to the Elon bomb thing bomb. and going all weird. You Do know? you want kids? The girl will I'm be Thalia, have... the guy will be Mitch. Uh, I actually have a cousin, Mitch. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have not thought about... Potato. I was thinking, yeah, potato. Do you, do you have a kid on the way? I have three kids. I, honestly, I'd be happy with like three, probably. Three. Max. Wow. Max, yeah. Beans. Three Max. Beans would be a great nickname. Beans yeah. I feel like actually one name that's been passed around by my wife and I is Buck. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh. Just total douchebag. I want one Buck. kid that's like known as the family douchebag. And then I want one kid that I name like something really eloquent, like English, like my English side of the family. Sterling. I don't know. About I kind of like Sterling. Yeah. I like Sterling for me. Well, my my family I, I is from Spencer Stratford. Spencer Sterling, isn't it Sterling Spencer? Oh, you might have. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly that. Yeah. I realized the opposite. You yeah. fucked up. No, I didn't fuck up. I just I just said it politely, like Anderson Case. Oh right. That's right. weird. Just Tom yeah. Anderson. Yeah. Tom yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I honestly can't imagine naming a human being. That sounds so stressful. 
A human being. You ever heard of that band, Human, human. Beans? That's a great band, by the way. Yeah. Great name. But nonetheless, what I, are you gonna name your kids? Yeah, that's um, true. I have names. Oh, yeah, you do. I'm not gonna tell you. Ah, you can't say it. Yeah. You can never say it. No, no. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Why? But I do. I do want kids. But I'm. I'm a lot older. Yeah. I'm gonna be an old dad. I'll be an older dad. That's cool. But I'm. I'm so. I'm so happy about yeah, it. Yeah, that's because cool. I'm in a place now where it's like I'm ready. Yeah, and I'm excited. That's what Ed, I'm I, super excited. It's better. It doesn't matter age. It matters how ready you are. Yeah, you know, I've. Geez, through Mitch's, we have kids that work there who are 25, 24. Have, yeah. They have like two kids. And I was like, holy smokes. Wow. Yeah. When I was 24, 25. No chance. No. Yeah. That's not. I felt wasn't, the same that way. wasn't on my. Yeah. My mind, but does the jizz have kids? No, what? not yet. But he it's does a have guy. a girlfriend. It's a nickname. Oh, good. Okay. He has it's a girlfriend. A, a human. So that's one step closer. Oh. Yeah. yeah, he's <laughs> Mormon. Um, too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm I'm excited. I hope I hope uh, you know, knock on wood, everything works out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure it will. Yeah. Who knows? That's exciting. Who knows? Yeah. Kids are exciting. We have a few, uh, or maybe just one baby on the way within the Seeger family. Not any of us three, but yeah. one, Hayden, what? who you met. Oh my gosh! I was like, wait, yeah, huh? yeah, he's having a baby. <laughs> cool. But. uh we're getting there. We're yeah. creeping into that age where it becomes more, as Matson said earlier, yeah, more normal. Matson was just talking about how excited he is to have children. Oh my! <laughs> this is going. This is, <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. kidding. Don't and uh, thanks. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, we know it. We All are. Right. We are. <laughs> we are towards the end. I know Eli has somewhere he has to be. Yeah, he has a best friend to attend to. Don't you? Film premiere. He's going to a film premiere tonight. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. One of his best friends. Eyeballs. Oh, wow. This, this was yeah. an easy hour 30. This yeah. Quite fast. yeah, that was a quick I, one. I don't even... I Hopefully, you enjoyed it. It was I amazing. Enjoyed it. I enjoyed this. Yeah. I, I, one last question, though. Yeah. yeah. Hit it. What... If we we're going to make a wetsuit, you yeah. guys wanted mm. a wetsuit. Yeah. Oh. Your favorite, what would you make? What would you make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, go around uh-huh. the horn? Kind yeah, of? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Go yeah. around the horn. Yeah. Uh, what What is the surf market missing? When it comes to wet seats, what would you introduce? Okay. The way that I want to start it off with yeah. is I think that um, I think that we can make a really cool uh, color combo because you guys are always black and blue. That's true. And mostly black. You've never really made like a color off. Only once. Okay. You made and, it yep. One one time ever. And it had the whole story was about Jacques Cousteau. Oh, very good. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. sick. I did not know about that. What was yeah. it? Like uh, it's called the eight and it had the yellow Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I do remember that. Yep. Okay, no, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Um, but because of that and, like, that you have, like, a legendary pass with the eight, <laughs> the same um, it would be super cool to to do something with some kind of color, uh, like maybe one, like, the left or right arm with some yeah, kind of, fine. some kind of, like, hidden meaning behind it. Yep. Maybe it's maybe it's the top layer right here is, like, a hunting orange because you like to hunt and we have a hunting background yep. kind of thing or, you know, whatever it is. Um I thought that would be cool. Yep. Um, I think I can leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> I can leave it there. I do love how, because I looked into the Matus logo, I was curious. I oh, always yeah. wondered that. And I love how you just keep finding meaning in history. Yeah. You know, like like you were talking about with JFK and yeah. all the big heads or whatever he, you called it. I'll tell you right now, yeah. uh, just to to leave on a interesting note, the yeah. logo is actually a part of the I Ching. And uh, the logo is actually kind of a bad omen. So it's That's a mm-hmm. bad omen. Well, the way you look at it, the three top lines yeah. represent heaven and the three broken lines represent earth. And if you look at it closely, you'll see that the in between the negative space on the big mm-hmm. top lines is wider than the bottom. And it's trying to show movement, meaning that heaven is not on earth. It's mm-hmm. imperfect. The Whoa. idea of imperfection, oh and that's exactly God. why we picked it. So the idea is, is that if you've ever read Robert Hastings' The Station, no. it's about always looking for perfection, but you're yeah. never going to get there. Mm. And if you're at peace with that, you're going to enjoy the journey. And every wow. product or anything that you're doing, you're going to enjoy that ride that much more. Wow. And then the circle represents the perpetual nature of always wanting to improve yourself. And I think everybody can relate to that, regardless of your station in life, whether or not you're, you're poor, that you're middle class, you're wealthy. Wow. Everybody wants to get better at something. Um, so I've had people ask me, they're like, hey, do you know that that actually means imperfection and and, and, and it's not? And I said, yeah. yeah, that's why we chose exactly. it. Wow. We embody that and we want to improve. And yeah. make, so that's yeah. that's, that's that great it? that you, you, you're you on top of that, too. <laughs> you're like, I, yes. Oh, yeah. Imagine if you didn't know that. that oh, yeah. Oh, no yeah. chance. No. Matthews, you sound like a history wizard, <laughs> yeah. bro. You're a deep thinker. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. The, the U is two eyes, right? Am I tripping right now? 
Well, the, yeah. So it's it has Matisse. the feet. Yep, old school. Uh, mm. Yeah, you should have seen all the different iterations, but we used like the Roman A. And I have a question. Yeah, can you help us make a logo? Yeah. <laughs> We've yeah. been trying so yeah. hard. We can't figure it out. Yeah. I so know. The, another fun fact is the logo of Matus is the first tattoo I ever got when I was 17 years old. Well, where is it? It's on my arm. Is it? Yeah, right, like it's right here. Right here. Yeah, know. yeah, but. Uh, I, I fell in love, like I was reading a book on Taoism, and yeah. it just gelled with me. Yeah. Uh, I, I was actually, uh, you know, I was baptized and I was brought up Catholic, yeah. but my mom was really open to letting me experience religions that's in a cool. different way. Yeah. And when I was reading about Taoism, I literally felt that's how things worked. And it was just talking about no two things are mutually, ex- mutually exclusive, yeah. and everything has uh, a cycle. And understanding that, and that's kind of where the whole ethos yeah. comes from. Wow. Yeah. There's so much to it. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. It's yeah. not just what you see. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of people it. see the Arc de Triumph and they think it's an M, but yeah, it's a. Uh, oh, the Arc de Triumph. Uh-huh. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, wow. Oh. Was there anything else that, well, I guess. Uh, wait, one last question. To, yeah. yeah. I want to. Where did you get Seeger from? Where did Seeger come from? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I man. think people want to know. Uh oh. No. <laughs> Everyone's God. like looking at each other. Oh, I got God. One. I got one. Blow up. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I got one. I have to know. So, one. I got one. Is that yeah, what you I said? got one. <laughs> we found out that um, we each had an ancestor that all worked at the Seeger Ranch, like early, early 1800s. How dare you? No, shit. Yeah. yeah. No chance. <laughs> I guess because we've explained this in other podcasts oh, okay. that we haven't re- released yet. So, th- yeah. like, if anyone listening, but long story short, is we basically needed to come up with a word because there's so many other brands out there. Like, everyone, their mom starts a brand. So they copyright it, yeah. they trademark it. And so, when other words that we wanted to make a, a symbol or a brand didn't work out, we had to come up with a word. And gotcha. so, we basically took the word C and the phonetics of Gur, like a masculine, like Gur, uh-huh. which pretty much embodies our whole brand. And we put them together, and it was a nice six letter word that we could brand well. And uh, that was pretty much it. I like yeah. it. Boom. Yeah. yeah. In short. Yeah. And, that was it. and in kind, short. kind of based off the pun cigar. I don't like that part of it. Which thank yeah, you for the cigars, cheesy. by the yeah. way. You always don't like that. I always thought the drawer was cheesy thank too. Mm-hmm. Right? That. Yeah. We I wish all, we could have smoked them different here. That'd yeah. be cool. But then, I know. Yeah, we your got, plate this would have smelled like it cigars. Would, yeah, right? yeah, we also know. have a little like yeah. that guy. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh I know. I don't know if that would go off yet. <laughs> no. Probably. Yeah. Well, that's please, that's uh, a enjoy them. Is there anything else you want to bring up or no? I would just like to say thank you for having me. But more importantly, I wish you guys nothing but the most success. And it's been really fun to watch you guys grow. Thank you very Thank much. You so much. Thanks for Appreciate giving it. us a chance. Really, you've helped us, as Matson brought up earlier. You've helped nurture this little plant that we've all grown together. So thank you very much. And thanks for being an inspiration. Matson's probably known you the longest growing up in La Jolla and everything. Yeah, so. since he was like this big. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so thanks for, so tall now. Yeah. thanks for doing what you do because it's a huge inspiration for us and for probably a lot of people listening. And and it's much needed in the surf industry, but also wetsuit specifically and pushing it forward and all that. So thank you. Thank yeah. you. It's symbiotic. Yeah. yeah. It goes both ways. Hell yeah. Well, yeah. cheers. Let's, let's go to Alaska, huh? Yeah. Let's go to I Alaska. Let's, let's go to that. Alaska. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. Uh, cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> there we go.